Yo, 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 we're back again. It's Ron and it is Vey, and we are here for another episode of our, I think we have a name now, podcast. I think we have a name. Vey, do you want to tell the people what the name of our podcast will be? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Drum roll, please. Drum roll, please. Around the culture. Hey. Woo! We finally got a name, baby. Around the culture. ATC presented by A2HH. Around the culture, man. I like it, bro. I like yeah. it. We've been sitting on that name for a while, though, man. This is not, not a new name, but we've been sitting on it for a minute. Yeah. Do you want to sort of talk real quick about it, like the why behind it? The why behind it is that we want to, you know, Vey is well versed in many, in hip hop. He's rooted in hip hop. I'm rooted in hip hop, but we are well versed about a lot of different things, you know. Um, Vey is in the music theater award. He's a producer. He's an actor. Um, and we have a little different elements that we want to bring to this discussion. We want to talk about fashion. We want to talk about films. We want to talk about things in the periphery. Look it up. Of Come the on. culture, right? You know what I'm saying? Oh, Things are wrong. Oh, SAT culture. word. SAT you know word. Yeah, man. Educated black men. You know what I mean? So yeah, we want to talk about things that are adjacent to the culture on the periphery about, you know, the fashion, the food, you know, things that inspire the culture. You know, it's, the music is the root, but there's things that's deeper than rap. We want to talk about other things as well. So around the culture, we thought was an appropriate name. We've been sitting on it for a while. Um, cause exactly, we've been talking about doing a podcast for years, but it took Kendrick and Drake to kind of bring us together, you know, <laughs> beef brought brothers together. Ain't that no so, doubt, right? no doubt. <laughs> you know, but, uh, so here we are around the culture. We're going to have some merch for you soon. And that's us, man. So around the culture, Ron and Bay presented by A2HH looking forward to chopping it up. But today's episode is something that is still rooted in the culture. It's hip hop, but it's not the music. Well, it is the music. But it's also the visuals. We're talking about the best and the brightest of hip hop films. Yes, yeah. again, best and brightest hip hop yeah. films. So Vey, Vey and I've been cooking up on this for a minute, and uh, we got a we got a good show for you guys today. So let's get into it. We're gonna talk about the actress. We're gonna talk about the soundtracks. We're gonna talk about the hood classics. We're gonna talk about just the overall the scene stealers. We're gonna talk about a whole bunch of elements that made the best hip-hop films in our culture so Vey, you want to kick us off with the first category yeah yeah um and to explain sort of because I, I sort of feel like we got to explain um what constitutes you know as a as a quote-unquote hip-hop film the criteria um, the, we're gonna the put the criteria, criteria up on the screen so tell them the criteria is Vey. Yeah, the criteria being movies that are either um, rooted, rooted in the culture, about the culture in some way, and or featuring someone from the culture in some way. And so, you know, it, it was sort of it was sort of tough being able to like go through the list, but it was also it was also fun. Um, and I think with this. You know, we wanted to have a little fun, you know, uh, you know, for shits and giggles, sort of set this up almost like the like the the A two H H Oscars, you know what I'm saying? So <laughs> we're, gonna, we're gonna throw our little throw our little ones out there and you know, see what y'all think, man. Let's see what y'all think. And also a lot of these films had dope ass soundtracks too. So absolutely you know, not only did have the movie that was hitting, but the soundtrack was hitting as well. Yeah, yeah. All right. So First category, movie posters. Movie posters. Oh, you got, yeah, you got that one though, right? Yeah, I got that one. Yeah, I forgot. Yeah, one. Yeah, hey man, we we are, we live right now. It's an award show, <laughs> passing cue cards out. So the best movie posters of all time. Yes, sir. And these are just these are just, and we're gonna put these up for vote. So just tell us what you think on 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 Facebook and on the website. But um, belly, belly. We got belly as the as one of the posters. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, the, I mean, it was just a real, it was black and white. It was just DMX, Nas, just yeah. a, a clean poster, M much like Hype Williams visuals, right? Yeah. It was just, it was just clean. Yeah. Number two, we got Do the Right Thing. Now, this was a little bit more colorful, but, you know, Spike at the, at the time, you know, 1989, 1988 was, was colorful. You know, it was, it was a, it was a color. It, it showed Brooklyn in that uh, vibrant, vivid, 
beautiful color. It was a movie where it was complex. It dealt with race relations uh, in New York City, but the 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 the, the poster was dope. I mean, it was clean. So yeah, you know, it's I, best posters. You know what I'm it's, saying? It's also one of those posters that tells you a lot about the story before you even watch it. With just you know him, um, him and uh, Danny Aiello looking up, you know, at the bird's eye view. You got the um, the cop in the uh, the police car and the cop in the bottom corner and the chalk, and then you got the the shoes at the top corner. You know, what I mean, it just sort of tells you, okay, this is a, a piece about the neighborhood. You know, and it, it just says so much about it before you even watch it, which I thought was dope. Exactly. The next poster we got is Juice. Now, this poster is a little bit different than the Do the Right Thing poster. A lot different. It's dark. It's muted. It's got blue tones to it. It kind of underscores the dark nature of the film. Um, and then it also has the words power, respect, juice on the cover. How far would you go for it, right? Right. Um, I just thought it was cool. I think it was gripping. It's got Pac in the front, Omar Epps over his shoulder, the other two uh, cats in the back. That's, um, a little, that's a little foreshadowing too. You know what I'm saying? Like as far as, far as you know, what transpires in the movie. You know, it's it's about right the order, the order in which they're in. Right, right, right. And how far would you go for it? Right, money, yeah. uh, power, and respect. You know what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. that's a a muted a muted one, but I think it's vi vivid. I mean, you remember the soundtrack, right? Because that was the same. It was a cover of the soundtrack as well. So you remember going to people's houses, seeing that. Um, it was just dope. The yeah. next poster, the next poster. Oh man! Now you now now Ray. Don't revoke my New York card. I should know this, right? I should know this. I should know this. Answer this question. Damn, I, I'm embarrassed, guys. You know, I spent some time in New York when my mom was born in the Bronx. <laughs> my, my, you know, my my grandfather used to work on Rikers Island. Um, oh, I lived in Long Island for a while when I was like two or three. So I, I, yeah, I've got New York in my blood, and I should know the answer to this question. With the next movie post on the list, put it up on the screen. It's Crush Groove. There's a bridge in the back. Is that the George Washington Bridge, Ray? Ooh, whoa, ah, shit. <laughs> wait, wait, hold on. Let me see. Let me see. Um, I don't, I would, yeah, that's a good, that's actually a great trivia question, bro. Because it's either, I don't think it's the George Washington Bridge. It, New Yorkers are going to kill me because I actually live in the city. I'm gonna venture and guess it might be the Manhattan Bridge. It I'm might, a, it, 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 it might be, it might be. But the reason don't know. <laughs> you don't know, damn, we're gonna revoke your New York pass too, babe. Damn, man. Should have uh, <laughs> listen, I know, I, and the only reason why I know it's not the, the George Washington is because the George, like, I live like right there, and the George Washington's right there, so I know it's not the George Washington, but that looks like either. It looks like either the Manhattan Bridge, New York is going to kill me. <laughs> they're going to they roast you. But yeah, let me tell you why this poster is so dope. First of all, it's just, it's an iconic poster. I mean, you got Sheila E. on the cover, right? You got mm -hmm. Run DMC on the poster. You got the Fat Boys. Mm -hmm. You got Curtis Blow. Uh, it, it breaks a couple rules because it has uh, a lot of, and that was big in the 80s and 90s. They had a lot of text on the damn poster, right? Yeah. But it's got Crush Groove. It's chilling. It's got Sheila E, Run DMC, The Fat Boys, Curtis Blow, New Edition. Uh, and, and Blair Fox, Underwood. Blair Underwood. But they didn't even put him on the, uh, they don't even put him in like in the marquee of the poster, right? Or like on the main text. They just got right. the artist, right? So it's yeah. really showcasing the artist. But but shout out to Blair Underwood. I believe this is his first film role. I believe it was his, his screen appearance. In yeah. a motion picture, he might have some TV, but I think this is his first main role in a motion picture. So shout out to Blair Underwood. But Crush Groove, I mean, we're going to talk about the importance of this movie a little bit later, but the poster was dope. We couldn't leave it out because it has so many iconic uh, performers and people that were important to our culture uh, in on the poster. The last poster of the list. Um, actually, yeah, we, yeah, we got we, no, we got another one. We got two more. We got two more. Two more. Friday, Friday. Um, I mean, what can I say about Friday, man? I mean, Vey, you want to explain why we picked this one? Well, for me, I just think it says I, I like posters that give you a glimpse of what you're about to see. And I think this I think Friday, again, does a great job, you know, 
But I'm wondering though, because they had, there's a couple of posters. I'm thinking of the poster of them leaning back when they see um, Miss Parker. Exactly. That's that's the one I'm thinking about too, and yeah. that was the I think that was the main one. I remember back in the day going to like the blockbuster, going to like the video store. That was the one on the VHS, I believe. Yeah, yeah, I'm, yeah. That was the one on the DVD too. I think that was the one on the DVD as well. Yeah, yeah. So that was a dope poster. And Miss Parker, had, yeah, Miss Parker had him leaning back. For, yeah, yeah, <laughs> for sure. Nah, but it, it captured like I just thought that, like the color scheme and all that. Like it captures the the light heartedness of of the vibe. Like you know, you you get in the comedy, um, and and all of that, man. Right, right, right. The next one, the next one, and the final poster in this category is Brown Sugar. And I'll tell you why I like this one, man. This one was um, uh, the colors, right? It's, you know, I'm a big, I mean, it's brown for one, right? It's got brown tones and it got orange tones. It's got that, it looks like fall, you know what I'm saying? It's annihilating, has like the golden skin that's glistening from the sun. I mean, it's just more of a, um, it's a romantic comedy, right? It's a hip hop romantic comedy. And I think the poster captures that, man. Two people, you know, two uh, black leads, an actor and an actress presenting a hip hop love story. Now it doesn't explicitly, um, it doesn't explicitly kind of document that it's um, hip hop, but it says on the cover, what does it say? It says the rhythm to beat the love and you don't stop. Yeah, so it, it does. It does have some uh, some elements of hip hop in it. But you you got to squint your eyes. I need some damn glasses to see it. But I just thought the cover. I thought the I thought the poster was dope. I just thought it was just a simple love story between uh, two people that are birthed in hip hop, that are rooted in hip hop, and I thought it was dope. Yeah. All right. So that's that's the movie posters, man. We're gonna put these movie posters up online. Make sure you vote for those. Which ones did we leave out? We did have some honorable mentions. We had what did we have an honorable mention? We had uh, we had Boys in the Hood. Boys in the Hood. That was a dope yeah. one. Another yeah. blue, a blue tone, blue and black tone, dark, ominous. Movie yeah. poster. That uh, that Cuba Gooding shirt is iconic too. Yeah, that was dope. Um, that was dope. We had um, Don't Be a Menace, Don't which a to me, I I love Don't Be a Men- like the Super Soaker on the cover, like that shit is hilarious, bro. That shit is hilarious. That's a crazy poster. Um, Bullworth. Remember yeah, Bullworth? Bullworth? Yeah, I remember Bullworth. We had yeah, Bullworth. Bullworth. That was one of those where you like you looking at it and you're like, yo. Am I looking at like it, it is just is is wild, but it's it's a dope cover. Um, CB4, CB4, CB4 yeah. with Chris yeah. Rock, Chris Rock, yeah, and then uh, Get Rich or Die Trying, which I thought was a good one, yeah, it was a dope one. It was a dope one. I, what about the eight mile poster? Eight mile poster was cool, but I don't, it didn't yeah. make all this though, yeah. Eight mile, eight mile is cool, eight mile was cool too. It was cool. Okay, so we got number two. Our second category is what's our second category? Biggest villain. Biggest villain in the film. We got a lot of villains, bro. We got a lot of villains, bro. I know. I know. <laughs> we have, hold on. Did we have any um, honorable mentions for the villains? Uh, I, I, don't I, don't, the villains. I don't think we did. We probably left off uh, what was Homegirl's name in uh, she was a villain. Uh, Homegirl's name in the Players Club. Uh, oh, was, hold uh, on. What was her name? <laughs> I can't read. Wasn't uh, that? What was her uh, name? Uh, hold on. I'm gonna pull it up real quick. Because <laughs> she she was she was she was nasty work, bro. <laughs> Ronnie, Ronnie, Ronnie. She set home girl up. You know what I mean? Yeah. So yeah, yeah. she yeah. It, she was uh. She was nasty work, bro. So let's get into the list, bro. The biggest villain in a hip hop film. All right. Um, oh, man, I love this list, bro. All right. So, number one, Cameron play Rico. Hayden <laughs> Cole. Man, bro. I think, I think, um, hold on one second, because New York City. Is loud as hell behind me. Let me shut my window. <laughs> you may have to cut that out. <laughs> we, we are. Don't don't worry. <laughs> All 
All right. So um, we got Cameron, Rico, paid in full. Man, man, I can't say enough about it, mainly because that was one of those roles where it, it surprised me more than anything how good he was. Like he was in it. On one hand, it shouldn't surprise you because he's he's from Harlem and he he just already captures that vibe. But like he was he was just he was great, man. Um, number two, Wesley Snipes, Nino Brown. I think that's self-explanatory. I think you can't have a you can't have a list of villains without Nino Brown, man. It's, it's I mean, it's change crazy. with your five dollar ass. You know what I'm saying? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. All right, this next one might be my he might be my favorite. Can't like Cam is my favorite, but I don't know. I don't know. Next one, LL Cool J, Dwayne Keith God. Gittins. I didn't even know that was his full name until he typed it yeah, out. His full, out. His full <laughs> government name. Straight he, crazy. The whole, the whole <laughs> government. Um, I can't explain to you how good LL was in this role, man. Like, and I mean, we'll 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 talk about it later because I we got another villain section, but yo, he was he was superb. Um, next, Tiny Lester as Debo, also rest in peace. He created a whole, he created a whole, like, a whole saying, right, in the hood. Like, I'm going to Debo your shit, right? Yeah, like, <laughs> like Debo, Debo is a verb. Yeah, it's a verb, <laughs> right? It's like, I'm going to Debo your shit. You yeah. Know I mean? Oh, nah, dog, you just got Debo. Fuck. Right. Like, that's villainous. That's villainous, man. Um. Then we got Julius Carey. Show enough. <laughs> the baddest, the meanest. <laughs> <laughs> show gun in Harlem. <laughs> what do you say? My favorite thing that show nothing we just say is like <laughs> he say, say Leroy. <laughs> playtime. Playtime is over, boy. <laughs> and I like at the end when uh when uh Leroy got the glow, he said, What the fuck? <laughs> Yo, show nothing show nothing, you fuck. Up. He went up to his parents. <laughs> he his damn fucking pizza play. He threw his little brother in the basket. <laughs> he was the meanest. <laughs> yeah, that was crazy. Yo, <laughs> he was showing up as a wild boy. Man. Hey, you know, oh, shit, shit. You know, we don't advocate gun violence on our platform, but <laughs> it, it showed up with in Harlem <laughs> in 2024. Yeah. He would have got lit, lit up, bro. It yeah. wouldn't have been, the... <laughs> that been that would have been it. Oh, god, that's funny. All right. Um, and the last one, I mean, you can't have a list without, you can't have a list without, um, Bishop. There's no way you can have a list without Tupac, Bishop, Juice, ain't no way. Ain't, ain't no, no way. way. And one of the most powerful villainous scenes in hip hop cinema history is when the locker closes. He, he's right there. You know? Yeah, yeah that's, a, that's a whole meme. That's right. a whole meme, man. <laughs> Yo. To touch on a uh, Rico, you know Rico it was villainous. He he did money, he did uh money making Mitch real bad, right? You know yeah. what I'm saying. But was he? He was he wasn't really a true villain, was he? Because yeah, he smoked his dude. He smoked, he smoked his Mitch. Dude, but I think he he was in a desperate situation. He was he was a snitch. Yeah, I mean yeah, he he was he was oh, he was a villain. He was. Honestly, he's a rider though. He started off as a rider though. He right, started. That's the thing. Like he's a dude you want on your team. You you need a you need a Rico on your team, but you know you you gotta also you gotta know how far you can take him because at some point them snakes gonna turn on you. Right. And if Ace would have just you know what I'm saying hooked him up with the connect, you know, gave him a little yeah. bit, he probably wouldn't have yeah. turned like that. You know. Yeah. Yeah, and you kind of saw it coming. You know, what? what's the point? What do you say? What's the point of having soldiers if you don't use them? Right. You know, and he that's... also told him when he saw him on the basketball court, he was like, yo, man, if you were just, why you ain't call me? I would have helped. You know? Yeah. You know? Um, the thing the thing is, touching back on, on God, <sighs> this dude, God, man, like, he tortures people, bro. Like this man is pushing broomsticks up 
up the rectum. Yes, I said rectum. He slammed a dude's arm, uh, dude's arm in the car with its damn baby in the back seat. Like you don't know what a dude like that is capable of doing. And like to me, like yo, that's he's he's a villain. He's yeah, a villain. To the he's team. a villain, and he's a sociopath. He's like Socio- a villain. Yes, he's a villain, like a like a. <laughs> A serial killer villain. So yeah, he's like, yeah he's, he really is. He really he's is. Wild. He's just wild. He's wild. So let's get to our next category. I mean, let us know what you think about these villains, man. If you got any others that we, we didn't have any on the um on the list, but um on the on the honorable mention list. But the next category we got is supporting role. Like these people, yes. these performances probably didn't get the the marquee. They probably didn't get the first name on the poster. They probably didn't get invited to the late night shows. You know, a lot of hip hop films, we didn't even get invited to those shows anyway. You know what I'm saying? But they made these films stand out. They made their performances. Um, without their performances, the movies wouldn't have been what they were. Um, right. So we really thought about this. Um, and we don't have an honorable mention category for this one, but I'm going to start off with Lorenz Tate, Menace to Society. Um, you can't have Menace to Society without O Dog. Now, trivia question. Uh, you probably already know this, but Tupac was originally supposed to play O Dog, and I think they had a. I think he fought. Did he fight the directors, the Hughes brothers? That was the. I think that's what the falling out was about. And um, if I'm not mistaken, I might be, but I think um, like Pac read for it, but he wanted to change. I think there was like stuff he wanted to change in the script, and he wasn't having. And I think that's where the where the fallout happened. From what I from what I understand, I might be like, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that's what what happened. Right. Um, imagine what history would have been if Pac was actually, you know, O Dog in Minister Society. It changed the career for Lorenz Tate. You know, put mm-hmm. him on the map. Uh, he went on to do a lot of great, th- a lot of great things in acting and also in within hip hop. Mm-hmm. Another supporting role you can't have doing the right thing. There's a lot of roles in there. You had Radio Raheem in there. You had, uh, I think, Robin Harris had a small part, a little bit part in it. Was uh, who else was in there? I think, I think somebody else was in there. I think Martin might have had a bit, bit part in there. Martin had the lisp. Yeah, yeah, Samuel Jackson. Yeah, you know, yep. right. You had yep. um, shout out to Rosie Perez. Rosie Perez Rosie made me. Perez. She introduced me. She was the. I was like four or five years old. I. Yeah, Latina women via via Spike Lee, right? I was like, "What is that, mommy?" Damn. She yeah, was like, no, was so, bad, so. man. But the the person, Danny Aiello, John Turturro, but um, this actor doesn't get his flowers enough. He doesn't um get the acclaim. Rave, you know who this man is, Jean mm-hmm. Carlo Esposito, bugging out. I'm gonna I'm correct you on the um on the pronunciation. Juan Carlo. Oh, Juan Carlo. We're going to edit that out. <laughs> hey, this Arlo. <laughs> this actor doesn't get his, doesn't get, well, hell, fuck it. Juan Carlo Esposito. <laughs> Juan Carlo Esposito. I always call him Gene Carlo Esposito. My bad, brothers. That's why you don't get enough flowers, man. I don't, I don't see you on these damn shows. For, you know, they don't be saying your name, man. So Juan Carlo Esposito. Yeah. Bugging out, man. Bugging out, man. Oh, man was the kind of like the voice of the film. Like he was the narrator but without being the narrator of the film, yeah. right? Yeah. You can't have uh the way Spike wrote it um and the way he directed it, it was masterful. But bugging out's like the 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 orator of the of the neighborhood in Brooklyn, right? He's communicating mm-hmm. through his scenes and through his through his lines in the film, the way he delivers it. So Juan Carlos Esposito, um I mean school days, I mean this man was just I mean, even to the to today, I mean, he's still, still, still one of the finest actors of our generation. Oh, oh yeah. Enough, I mean, doesn't get enough props. Gus, man. He Gus in Breaking Bad is probably one of the best villains, you know, <laughs> on TV. Right, right, uh, right. So, man, it's just, you, it's just crazy, man. We need to get him on the show, man. Uh, one of these days, and just kind of talk about his work, man, because um, yeah. it was, it was legendary, and it is legendary. The next actor, best supporting role. Uh, I will, we're gonna go with most deaf, Brown Sugar. Another okay. one of those actors that's like kind of the voice of reason within the film, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, 
comedic performance. Uh, he's a cab driver. He's an MC trying to make it. Uh, he's like the voice of voice of reason in the film, right? He's, he's his perspective is an honest perspective, and he kind of carries his part in a way that's that's effective. And I and and Vey, you had a uh, an interesting observation about the film. You thought that in this movie, Brown Sugar, that the lead role should have been Flip. You should have thought you thought I mean, most. If we use in of those two, of those two, I just don't, you know. And I'm a I'm a Tay Diggs fan, man. Like I'm a musical theater guy, and you know that's where Tay Diggs' roots is. Um, but I don't know. I just I didn't believe him as a hip hop head. You know what I mean? Like I yeah. I would have believed him more as Most Def's character because Most Def's character was a little bit more nerdy, for lack of a better way of putting it. Um, and I would have believed Most Def because I believe Most Def is just he's cool. Like he's he's a cool dude, and I think that part would have translated well as the romantic lead um, in that way. Where I feel like Tay Diggs was just sort of cast in that role because he would sell tickets, and you know at the time black women loved Tay Diggs. And um, but honestly, I would have cast, you know, I would have went for like a Lorenz Tate, Makai Pfeiffer. Um, there was somebody else we said. Uh, Omar Epps would have been good. Omar, Omar Epps, like one of those, one of those types. I would have, I would have even believed like a, um, a Morris Chestnut. Like he, Morris Chestnut, like strikes me as like an R and B kind of dude. But I would have believed him even more than more than Tay Diggs. Hell, I mean, you could. I, I don't know. You could have sold sold the tickets, but Wood Harris would have been a good one too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, Wood Harris, you know, Wood, I mean, Wood Harris would have been good. But I still enjoyed the film. I think from a. Yeah. I mean, it's a hip hop romantic comedy. We don't have many of those, right? I mean, it's, right. you can probably count on your hand how many hip hop romantic comedies we have. Um, yeah. So the the next two um, supporting role in a hip hop film, go, it's in the same movie. It's same in the movie. same movie. And you might say, no, this guy is the the star of the show, but I, I think he was a supporting role. I think it was Ice Cube show, and this next actor supported Chris Tucker Friday, Smokey. Smokey, Smokey. I mean, he, I mean, you he stole the show. <laughs> you know, I mean, you can't have Friday without smoking, and they try to do it. They continued it with Friday after next, and they introduced um, Cat Williams, they introduced Mike Epps, um, Clifton Powell is Pinky, a lot of different actors, but Smokey is Smokey. You know what I mean? I mean, you can't have Friday. There's no Friday without Chris Tucker and without Smokey. Yeah, like you need a for the for those movies, like you need because Ice Cube plays such a great straight man. You know, you need that that strong comedian. Not and I, and I is I love Mike Epps. Like I I I I thought Mike Epps was you know he was a great and I and I think uh, Cube and Mike Epps have a great chemistry. Um, you know, you can't deny the magic of that first Friday in Chris Tucker's. You know, his performance was just out of this world, man. And it really established him and his brand of comedy and his brand of acting. And, you know, he was able to he was able to get a money talks and a whole rush hour franchise out of it. So, you know. Right, right, right. And Netflix specials and other things came out mm -hmm. of it. Connections, whole deal. But right. the last the last role in um, best supporting role in a hip hop film that we highlighted was John Witherspoon Friday. I mean, pops, I mean, you can't, <laughs> you can't, I mean, oh, I'm, that's boom. I'm, I'm doing boomerang. Though. That's, that's boomerang, not, boomerang, uh, yeah. man. But you, um, that's oh, your ass. Mr. That's, that's your ass. Mr. Postman. You know what I mean? <laughs> Every time I'm in the kitchen, you right, <laughs> right, right. You gotta get a job, son. You gotta get a job, but I like pig feet. You know, it was crazy. It was crazy. But you know what, though? He had, even though he was a funny guy, um, and rest in peace to, to John Witherspoon, shout out to him and his family. But he had the most powerful scene in the movie. At the yeah. end, when he's telling Craig, like, give me the mm -hmm. gun, man. Yeah. And he's like, man, we used to, back in the day, we used to use our fists. You know what I'm saying? You live to see, you lose nothing, but you live to see another day. You know what I'm saying? That was a powerful, that yeah. just speaks to him as an actor, right? The yeah. He had range, and it's, 
I don't know. I I got to go back into his um his filmography. Um, I wonder if he had a, more opportunities to play dramatic roles. I don't think he did because he was so funny and he was a yeah. a master of timing. That's, good. That's a good question. Yeah, physical comedy. You know, from the Wayne's mm-hmm. Brothers to Boomerang to mm-hmm. even be the music videos. You know what I'm saying? Right. right. Um, but this is a powerful scene in Friday, man. It was real, and I think it was um it was a, a very important. Um, film because uh, important scene uh, in hip hop history because it just it underscores with the way things have changed right we've always had gun violence in our communities right 70s you know 80s 90s but there was a time where people just settled it with fists man it wasn't about that and he kind of in that moment in that scene he kind of spoke to it about um, I think DJ Pooh wrote the script right it was DJ Pooh yeah I think, was, I think it's the both of them yeah. yeah, Ice Cube, Cube and Pooh. Uh, the way they wrote that in, in a comedy, put that message out there was dope, man. So those are my, those are our, uh, Around the Cultures, A2HH's best supporting roles in a hip-hop film. So, Vey, you got the next category. I think we are at the scene, scene stealer. Scene stealer. Scene stealer. <laughs> scene stealer. T- define that, Vey. Define that. What is a scene stealer? Because you talk about supporting actor. What's, what's the scene stealer? Scene stealer is the actor in sort of a smaller role that for whatever reason they steal the scene they they the performance is so good they're the ones that you leave talking about in some way shape or form or you you see how talented they really are in in some of these ones that we have so um yeah, so with no further ado, we got Robin Harris, House Party. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <Yo>, the um <laughs> the scene that always comes to mind in House Party is um follow the drip, follow the drip. <laughs> Man said uh he said Bala <laughs> he said Bala sound like something you catch on your feet. <laughs> oh man, nah, Robin Harris was a great father too. He was a great father, but man, when he was at that party roasting everybody, yo. <laughs> Little test tube baby. Robin Harris. Robin Harris. My favorite part of Robin Harris. My favorite part of Robin Harris is at the end. When uh you don't even see it when he's <laughs> when he's tearing kid up. <laughs> <laughs> he, he's, I told you. No, he's like, no, no, I, was, I, was, I, was, I just told you. So you think I'm playing with you, huh? You know, oh he thought was, he thought was dope, man. Right, that sounds right. like, sound like a real ass whooping, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, next, we got Bernie Mac, Players Club. Oh, man. Bernie Mac. Yeah, yeah. I'll let, you, I'll, let you, I'll let you talk about that one. I, I love it. I mean, he was just dollar bill was just, you know, Bernie was just, and I'm speaking more of a Bernie because I wanted to get him on the list, man. But Bernie was just one of them ones, man. Dollar bill was just, you know what I'm saying? Dollar bill was just uh, the high, one of the highlights of the film. I mean, he stole, every time Bernie was on the screen, he stole, he stole the show. You know what I'm saying? I could imagine him bringing that Chicago essence to being a a strip club owner Mm -hmm. or promoter. You know what I mean? He would just, he was just he was just Bernie, man. And uh I wanted to give Bernie his flowers and we wanted to put him on this list, but Dollar Bill was just a <laughs> was just a yeah. funny guy. They put I hate that Dollar Bill went out like that. You know, he threw Bernie and Dollar Bill in the trunk, you know. <laughs> but hopefully you, he lived to see another day, but uh probably yeah. not. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm glad um he had a he had a role that really like he's always Bernie Mac. You know, Bernie Mac is always going to shine in the movies, whether it's, um, you know, Friday or whatever. But this was like a substantial role that allowed him to really be him. And it was a lot of meat to the role, too, man. Pause. So, right, right. Man, I hate that Bernie, you know, transitions as early as he did, man, because he mm-hmm. was um, he was another one. I think that um, and you would know more th- more about this than I would, being that you are well versed in the, in, the, in the art and the discipline. I think he would have been um not only was he a comedic genius, but I think he had the ability to really be a, a dramatic take a dramatic role to another level. Mm-hmm. He could have he could yeah. have made switched and been a been played a 
a, a darker role, a more uh, dramatic role. I think he could have done that later on in his life if he right. wanted to. I think he had the ability. I think he was that fine of an actor. Yeah. Uh, as well yeah. as a comedian to do that. Yeah, I um I I was thinking the same thing because he was he was really starting uh he was really starting to get going when he was doing those Ocean's Eleven movies. And right. you know what I mean? And being able to, you know, if he can if he can shine and it it he he had comedy, he had comedic moments in that, but that was definitely one of those movies where it was like, okay, they're like glimpses of him being able to take the acting to the next level. So yeah, no, right. I Who's our next scene stealer? You added this one, and I'm I'm so glad you did because I almost forgot. Big boy, ATL. Yo, bro, bro. You can't forget that one. We couldn't forget that oh, one. <laughs> man, oh man. I'll let you, I'll let you. I'm gonna just say this. Big boy surprised me more than anything. Big boy's a great actor. Big boy's a great actor, bro. Like he is. He he's is. he's funny, he's menacing, but he's cool. Like he wasn't trying too hard to be the villain. He was he just was, and that's like that's some hard shit to do, man. Big Boy's a great actor, bro. Yeah, like I said, he was menacing in the role, right? I mean, he was just like he was funny. It was like, but it was like a scary, scary funny. You know what I mean? It was yeah. like. Uh, yeah. I'm, I want to laugh, but yo, he's serious. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. I think he, uh, it speaks to his intelligence because you can hear his intelligence as an MC. Um, mm -hmm. He transferred that into acting, right? And he was able to create a character that was was funny, mm -hmm. it was charming, it was menacing all in one. And a lot of people don't give credit. So we, we, we had to include him on the list, man. We had to include yeah. him on the list. Man. I thought his performance at ATL was a was a scene stealer. It was a showstopper. Yeah, yeah. He might have had the best performance of a rapper in the film. To be quite honest with you, you know, <laughs> <laughs> if I'm keeping it a buck, you yeah, know? yeah, nah, no doubt, no doubt. Keep it a bean. All right, well, next, next we got Snoop Dogg, Baby Boy. <laughs> <laughs> Why'd you put that one on the list, man? <laughs> I mean, you know, wait, did I put did I put that one on? Yeah, you put that one on the list. Oh, no, I did. I did. I put yeah. it on because he was, you know what I'm saying? He was good. I thought I thought he was good, man. I thought he was good. I he, thought was he, was on good. Jody, he was on Jody's ass. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? And um, Snoop's, a, Snoop's an underrated actor, man. He actually, I think Snoop is funny. But, you know, when I think about Snoop, um, training day also comes to mind. He did a good job, but now he was a snitch. But um, and baby boy, you know what I mean? Like I, I believed him because the thing is, a, a, the thing about a good villain is that a good villain, you feel the pressure that they put on the protagonist, the the the, the main person. And um, you know, I definitely felt like Jody had some pressure on him. You know, in a way that it was like, okay, yeah, like I, I want to. I wouldn't want to fuck with this dude either. Right. Yeah. He was he was crazy. He spent a, a good bit of the film terrorizing Jody from jail. You know, yeah. I mean? so, yeah. <laughs> so you yeah. gotta so yeah, he could have been a villain, he could have gotten into the villain category, but he did steal the scene. And that was really, I think that might be one of his best active performances, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. That I can think of. We got a couple more on this list. Steam yeah, we stuff. got it. We got a couple more. I'm gonna let you do uh I'm gonna let you do the last one. <laughs> <laughs> but um we got we got to say Chris Rock New Jack City man. We you can't you can't have a list without Pookie. Like it's impossible. Can't. I mean he's that's a meme in itself, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's a meme in itself, man. That and that was a uh, um <laughs> it was funny. It was a <laughs> New Jack City is a is a drama, but it was a <laughs> it was funny. I mean his performance was <laughs> But funny. he did. He did show that he had acting chops, though. He did, he did show that he could. He could be serious too. He did. He did. He did. He did. He did. Uh, Pookie. I mean, you think of New Jack City. You think of New Nino. One. And you probably think of Pookie too. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I would play. Yo, yo. 
We're going to play a scene from a Pookie real quick so we can show the audience. If some of these guys that watch us are young, they don't know how funny Pookie was and how important he was in New Jack City. We're going to roll that real quick. Here we go. Yeah, man. All right. So the last one of the scene stealer category in hip-hop film. I'm going to play another scene, Vey, because I mean, and I the- mean, damn, man, I can't explain this shit, man. Shabadu and Boogaloo Shrimp, man, from the film Breaking. I, I, I let you, I, go, ahead, go, go ahead. ahead. No, go ahead. Go ahead. No, I, I want you to say it because I don't. Truth be told, I always skip to the dance scenes in Breaking. Honestly, like I, yeah. I, I, didn't, I didn't really like. I, I like the story, but I was just more into it just because I wanted to see the Breaking and all of that. So I didn't, you know, I didn't feel, you know, you you added it. So I wanted. I, wanted I mean, to- it's just self-explanatory. I mean, you just explained it. You you skip to the dance scene. <laughs> <laughs> so, so that fits in the category of a scene stealing performance because if you don't yeah. even care about the plot, you don't okay. care about homegirl, you know, her journey, her plot, na- the narrative devices, right. none of that bullshit. You just want to see Shabadoo and Boogaloo Shrimp do their thing, man. So I'm gonna play the scene. That's the number reason why, you know, I picked them as a, a scene stealer in the hip hop film, Breaking. Yeah. Ice T was in that movie too, by the way. Yeah. Um, yeah. All right. So that was that was the scene stealer in a hip hop film award. Yes, yes. Now, Faye, we're gonna go to uh something that's debated in barbershops, probably debated in academia. I believe there's courses dedicated to artists, rappers, producers that have transitioned to another artistic medium, uh, such mm-hmm. as the stage and also like what we're discussing today, film. So the next category is the best rapper actor. Now, this is not the best performance in a film we're going to have those categories later best actress best actor in a film this mm-hmm. is just a rapper that became an actor and who's the best at it so without further ado ve nominees for the list of the best rapper actors i mean you know let's just let's just get it out the way you can't have a list without will smith i think i think it's understood Will Smith is the greatest actor, rapper, and possibly, arguably, one of the greatest actors of our generation. Like, that's just that goes without saying. Um, you know, if if argue with argue with your mama, like, <laughs> what are we talking about? I mean, we ain't talking about nothing, man. We yeah. talking about <clears throat> Independence Day. We're talking about Hitch. We're talking about uh, I Am Legend. We're talking about the um, Ali, Enemy Ali. of the State. Um, the movie you know, um, Seven Pounds. Seven Pounds. We're talking about Suit of Happiness. Bright. We're you know, like Emancipation, right? We're talking mm-hmm. about uh Bad Boys. We're talking about so many different things. Yeah. I, I mean, the list goes on and on. I mean, I mean, one of my favorite films of him was a uh, was Hitch. It's a romantic comedy. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. I, I think that's the most one of the most underrated you know, romantic comedies of our time. I mean, people talk about Pretty Woman and My Best Friend's Wedding, and they talk about all these up, Notting Hill. But if you're going to talk about romantic comedies, a hip-hop artist made one of the best ones of all time. Um, yeah. But yeah, they, I can't say nothing more, man. Wh- who's yeah. next on the list? LL Cool J. LL Cool J, absolutely, man. And um, for me, it was it was actually the In Too Deep movie that was like, oh, okay. He's he's serious. I mean, because it's one thing to play like I know it's you could look at it as stereotypical rapper playing a drug dealer or whatever, but the it was the way in which he played him with it was the nuance of the performance. It was the subtleties like he did. He did character work, you know, like he you could you could just tell like this wasn't just him phoning it in like he. He he captured a lot of the subtleties about about that, um, and of course you you can't you know he has other amazing um, moments. He's on um, NCIS. He's a regular and a star in NCIS, so that tells you something right there. Um, I don't know if you remember the uh, the show um, in the house. You know what I mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. But. Uh... What's her, what's her name? She's kind of struggling right now, but uh, Maya Campbell was in that joint. You know what I'm saying? Mm, right, right, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One of my teenage crushes. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, uh, LL, LL was dope, man. Uh, 
you know, one of my favorite scenes with LL, like he really embodied the character. I think he took it too far because he was like method acting or something. And he got to a fight with Jamie Foxx on the set of the Any given Sunday, yep. I remember he told my man, he said, you're an offensive coordinator. <laughs> he said, you're an offensive coordinator, B. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so yeah, LL, man. LL was, LL was dope, yeah. man. Yeah. All right, next on the list, we got Mighty Most Deaf, man. And um, from what I understand, Correct me if I'm wrong. Um, and I, when I say correct me when I'm wrong, that's always to the uh, folks in the comments. He started as an actor. I think he was an actor first, even before he was a rapper. Like he has, like it's, it's well documented that he has, um, tra- like he's, he's a trained actor, like he went to school for it. Um, but I think he was actually an actor first and then, you know, he, he did the hip hop thing, but like, you know, he's one of those where he he just makes it look effortless. And honestly, um, to be honest, it wasn't even a film that did it for me. It was the fact that he he starred in the play um, on Broadway, um, Top Dog, Underdog by Susie Laurie Parks. He starred in that opposite of um, Jeffrey Wright. You know, yeah. Jeffrey Wright? Yeah, I know Jeffrey yeah, Wright. Yeah, yeah. Great actor. Yeah, so a young Jeffrey Wright in Most Deaf. Um, and, you know, for those who don't know uh, what Top Dog Underdog is, is a story about two brothers. It's just the two of them. And, um, yeah, it's just um, they're two brothers, and, you know, they they got they got issues, um, for lack of a better way of putting it. But, um, man, this, he, he just makes acting look so effortless. Um, I think about, uh, Brown Sugar, um, movies are, are escaping me right now, but yeah, he's, he, he is the truth. Who's next on the list, brother? Ice Cube. Q. 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 I mean, what more can we say about Q, man? Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, he, Ice Cube was somebody like he... He plays, and I think I said this earlier, like he knows he 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 knows his type. You know what I mean? Like a lot of times, um a, a big thing with film actors, you gotta know your type, like the types of roles you play and, and all of that. And he's, you know, he plays a great what they call a straight man, which is, you know, he he you when you when you play a straight man, you're just sort of regular because it allows that to um that energy to play off of whoever the funny man next to you is whether it's chris tucker whether it's uh mike epps but um you know ice ice cube is and he's and he's also funny like he's also funny you know in his way too and um yeah you know you you can't have a list without cube can't have a list without cube man I, my, one of my favorite cube performances was three kings Three Kings was dope. Remember yeah. Mark Wahlberg? Yeah. Was a and, uh, Clooney, Clooney was in that too, right? Uh, I think George Clooney Clooney. might have been in that as well. Hey. Three Kings. Let me, yeah, Three Kings. But that was a dope film. They went to Iraq or something and they came back yeah. and they, they took some money. Um mm-hmm. yeah. Who else is on the list? We got a, we got we got we got a couple more in honorable mention. Yeah. I got one more in honorable one mention. One more in honorable mention. Um Queen Latifah. Queen Latifah. The equalizer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah man nah queen latifah is the truth man um the performance that did it for me was actually a musical uh chicago a performance in uh, uh chicago i mean and that's the thing too is that she showcased so much of her her talent in that she was also singing and you know a lot of people don't know she's actually a really great singer um in addition to rapper actress but um you know Everybody thinks a living single, of course. Um, she got she had the romantic comedy with um, with Common, and uh, I think uh, Just Right. I think that's I think that's what it was called. But yeah, yeah. And, I mean, Queen Latifah. I mean, I don't know if she gets enough flowers. I mean, you mentioned I was yeah. gonna, I was going to touch on this, but she's an incredible singer. Mm-hmm. Not only is she a dope MC, one of the best, arguably one of the best female MCs of all time. 
Right. And if we talk about an all time MC list, male or female, she would probably be within the top 100. Mm -hmm. Maybe an argument top 75 could be an argument top 50. Right. Right. That, you know, so that her talent extends to the stage, you know, from she did. I think she's been on Broadway before. I believe she has. She's done a done a residency or done a, a stint on Broadway. Then she did Chicago, the musical. And then she did, um, you know, she was Chloe Cleo and said it off. Right. Mm -hmm. um she was she, she was great as cleo yeah just right and then she's an equalizer mm -hmm. um she's just dope man and a lot of people don't understand how dope queen latifah is man so shout out to the queen i'm um, looking forward to seeing her more they make jokes <laughs> this is guy this is podcasters ripping her say we don't want to see 50 year old women jumping off buildings beating up dudes <laughs> he, he thinks he thinks it's unrealistic <laughs> her her role in the equalizer, but I you know I saw a couple episodes. I thought it was cool, but I did say you know, yeah, she's kind of out of shape, jumping from tall buildings in New York City. Nah, no, she doing her thing, man. <laughs> you know, I ain't gonna hate, but I kind of I understood where the brother was coming from. So so we got an honorable mention, and I got I I'm throwing you a curveball because we. We will not be doing our due diligence if we left this gentleman off the list. But mm -hmm. I'm going to let you go put your honorable mention first. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hit you with mine. Because I can't believe we didn't even put him on the list. Yeah. I feel so bad that we didn't even put him on the list. It's crazy. Yeah. Um, Common. Oh, Common. <clears throat> yeah. And um, what I, what I respect about Common is that he respects the craft of it all. And again... Um, for me, so he's um, he was in the show on Broadway called Between Riverside and Crazy, and that that was the thing that sort of told me like I I like when people take the craft of whatever area of concentration they're focusing on seriously, and so I what I mean by that is if you're gonna be a rapper, you know, do your research on who to, not only on who the greatest um, is currently, but also who came before you, you know, all of that. Study the craft, and the same goes with acting. And um, yeah, you know, there was um, he he was in Hell on Wheels, Just Right, um, just to name a couple. And uh, yeah, man, shout out to Common. Shout out to Common, man. I'm disappointed in myself, and I'm I'm a little disappointed in you, Vader. We probably were thinking this in our notes. This rapper probably has the largest, most lengthiest filmography and television career in the history of all rappers. You know who that person is? Who are you gonna say Mark Wahlberg? Ice T. Ice T. Original, original Ice T. I mean, Vey. Yeah. Let me just go through this real quick. 1984, yeah. breaking, breaking two, electric boogaloo. 85, yeah. rapping, 91. He took, and this guy took a six year break. New Jack City, Ricochet, 92 yeah. Trespass, Y Colors, CB4, Who's the Man, Gift, Surviving the Game, Tank Girl, Johnny Mnemonic, Frankenpins, Below Utopia, Mean Guns, The Deli, Crazy Six. I mean, Judgment Day, Urban Menace, Stealth Fighter, Fi Stealth Fighter Final Voyage, Sonic Impact, The Disciples, Corrupt, The Wrecking Crew, 300,000 Miles to Graceland, Point Doom, Leprechaun in the Hood. I mean, this guy went, I mean, straight to Video King, right? right, right. <laughs> but he had a lot of feature films, man. Um, yeah. And then television, Law and Order SVU. Law and Order, yeah, yeah. And he played one of the biggest villains in hip-hop film television history. He was on New York Undercover. You know what I'm saying? He was terrorizing Jay-Z. I think he killed Jay-Z's yeah. lady. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's wild. He kidnapped his son. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> He's also he's also a funny funny dude because he was on Chappelle's show. Remember the the Play Haters Ball? Oh yeah, oh yeah. He has some com comedic timing too. Yeah, you know? yeah. Yo, yeah. yeah. I can't believe we forgot about Ice Ice, Ice Tea. Yeah, Ice Tea, Ice Tea. The one of the greatest hip hop actors of all time, man. No mm -hmm. doubt. What are that? What's our next category, babe? What's our next category? All right. Actor performance. Actor performance. Okay. I think I got no, you got that one. Do you who, who got that one? Yeah, you got that one. Yeah, yeah, I got it. I got it. 
Um, we got Tupac and Juice. There it is, Tupac and Juice. Killer performance. Um, question. I might be late. I might be late on this. I might be late. I had no idea that, and I, <clears throat> and I don't even know if this is true or not, but I just saw it in the meme and I was like, oh shit, that his character was inspired by the actual Bishop piece on the chessboard, like down to the haircut. You see that meme? I have not seen that meme. I'll put it up on the screen real quick. Yeah. But, uh, but um, the fact that because the way the bishop moves on the chessboard is it, it crosses, it goes cross, and bishop crosses, he crosses boys. Man, I, we I, gotta, thought that was in, I thought that was interesting. Man, um, I got We going to dig deep in that one, brother. That was, if that's the case, that was uh, incredible writing. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, was, you know, it's one of those things where I might be late, and motherfuckers like. You didn't know that shit, you know, or it's like, oh man, you're too deep. But either way, I thought it was cool. Um, next, <clears throat> Ice Cube Friday. Okay. Dope. 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 Great, great performance. Um, this next one, I'm glad you added this one. Terrence Howard, Hustle and Flow. Hustle, Hustle and flow. flow, man. Come on, Terrence Howard, <laughs> one of the greatest actors of our time, man. Yeah, yeah. One of the greatest actors of our time, man. Man, and Ray, I remember I was watching, Uh, you know, sometimes I'll be watching TV, man, and uh, when the kids go to sleep, and I'm on the couch, and I got this TV that, um, I don't know what the hell it is, man. I think I was watching Tubi. Like, we're going to do a separate <laughs> show. We're going to do a separate show on like Tubi Film Awards. Let me have some crazy shit on Tubi, right? So I, watched, I fell asleep, right? And uh, when I woke up, Empire was playing. I think it was the episode number one. We had this, uh, this artist in the booth, and uh, she was singing her heart out, right? And he was just watching it like Terrence Howard does, right? He's just watching her. He's got like a scowl on his face. Like, and uh, he's like, cut the music off, man. <laughs> and then he walks in the booth, and he's like, I need you. No, you know, he, t- he talks to her through the intercom. Like, through, yeah. to the he's like, I need you to give me a little bit more feeling. Sing. With your soul. <laughs> right? So she starts singing again. And uh, she's like, she sings a little bit harder, you know what I'm saying? He's like, man, cut this music, cut it, cut it off, man. He tells the engineer to cut it off, man. He walks in, <laughs> he puts his hands on his shoulder. He's like, I so you remember when your brother got shot? <laughs> you remember when you was in the hood and your mama was begging for food stamps? <laughs> I need you to sing like your life. <laughs> and he goes back out and she just starts singing and like she's hitting different you know actors oh. in her range and she's she's she and he's like yeah that's what i'm talking about man <laughs> yo terrence power is one of the best fucking actors of our time. he is man he fucking is man <laughs> But I just wanted to bring that up, man. You go back to the list, bro. Yo, <laughs> you got that man's tone down, too. <laughs> oh, shit. That's funny. All right. <laughs> uh, next, Cameron, paid in full, man. Absolutely. Absolutely. Just Rico. Yes, Rico. Hands down, fantastic performance. Yeah, wild man. performance, man. Wild performance. Yeah, fantastic, yeah. Fantastic job. And then uh, last on the list, we got LL Cool J in Too Deep. You know, I think I think I spoke a little bit on that. You know, I spoke enough on that, man. Like, I, I love that performance, bro. Like, he killed it. Killed it. Killed it. Killed it. Yes, sir. So you got, you got actresses? Yeah. Uh, I, you know, I won't be keeping it a buck. You know, I got to keep it a bean. You know, a lot of these that I picked... Um, but not so much for the performance per se, you know, because hip hop film and video is a visual art form, right? So there's some level of visibility that you have to have the aesthetic, if you know what I mean, right? I, so, hate you. I can't so see. It's not necessarily as classically trained performers. They weren't method acting. Um, they didn't really rivet me uh, emotionally, but aesthetically, visually some of these performances I had to put in the mix. So 
Number you ain't one. shit. You um, ain't shit. <laughs> real, man. I, I, I got to keep it real, man. I got to keep it real. Sinai Lathan Brown Sugar. I mean, again, as I articulated before, leading lady, romantic comedy. I saw her struggle. You know, I've seen that type of deal in reality where you with somebody and you want to be with somebody else and, you know, you're struggling, you're conflicted. You know, even though what she was doing was wrong, you know, she, you know, she was with Boris Cujo's character, but she was really feeling her friend, but she had put him in the friend zone and it was a good performance to struggle. I mean, we've all probably been in that situation Absolutely. where we've been, you know, feeling a young lady and you were friend zoned a little bit and, you know, you, you, you had to get out of it. You had to not navigate through it. And she was conflicted with it. Well, and the thing is, too, is um, I believe, you know, I know I said I didn't, um, Feel Tay Diggs as a hip hop head, and that's and again, I like Tay Diggs as I love Tay Diggs as an actor, just not in this role. I want to clear that up. But Sanaa Lathan, she's a hip hop head to me. Like I like, she she gave me B girl, B girl vibes, and um, you know, I think you can't ask for much more in this in this movie. Can't you can't ask for too much more. So I'm gonna go. So now I'm going to I'm going to save like the best performance for last because the performance, one of the person I pick for strictly based on performance doesn't fit that aesthetic criteria that I outlined a little bit earlier. I'm going to go to Lisa Ray, the Players Club. OK, I mean, you know, I mean, you know, for reasons I don't have to explain, I think that was her breakout performance. Uh, you know, I think she did a fine job of articulating what uh a young lady in the adult entertainment industry um, in a club and that environment goes through. Uh, so I thought she did good. I thought it was a, a very raw performance, uh, but I thought it was a good performance. I think it had a little bit of heart into it, a little soul. But I think she did a fine job um, in the film, apart from the other the things about the film. Yeah. Uh, number three, I'm going to go, I'm going to take you old school. I'm going to take you back to Beach Street, Ray Dong Chong, right? And you took it back on huh? I took it back. Radon Chong was, you know, uh, the daughter of Tommy Chong, you know, from Cheech and Chong. And she was, I mean, not only did she carry the film from a feminine perspective, because she was embracing an element of danger in the film. And that film, Beat Street, doesn't get a lot of credit because it has all the elements really of hip hop in the film. But it really focuses on, you know, uh, b-boying, you know, DJing and graffiti. But she embraced that as a girl that's like in the arts, a young lady that's in the arts, not of that element, that's trying to learn about, you know, what's going on in the Bronx in that time and how hip hop culture was taking over New York City and particularly the borough of the Bronx. And she was beautiful. I mean, she was a beautiful young lady. I thought her, her performance was fine. And I think also it showed her her vulnerability and her attraction to what was taken over uh, culturally. Uh, in the Bronx. So I got shout out to Radon Chong. Number four, I mean, come on, man. Nia Long Friday. I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean let's, what are we what are we saying? It made me fall in love. I used to always like long flowing hair. But that was the that was the first time I, you know, I saw uh in a film the short hair. You know what I'm saying? It was just like, you know, I understand what Craig was was going through. You know what I mean? I understand what he was his mission, you know, in films, his narrative devices, you know more than I do, you know, being a writer uh, in that world, you know, every hero needs, uh, you know, uh, something to pursue. And that was that one. And people always, you know, use Friday to kind of, you know, talk about Neil Long and hold her in that regard. All right. So the number, uh, the last one, uh, Cleo, set it off, man. I mean, her performance is raw. I mean, it was just raw. Yeah. It was uh, insane. It was. It was just a. It was just a dope performance, man. Um, so, those are the top five performances, actresses, and uh, act, actress performances in hip hop film. And I, I will say, as you know, as we're going through that list, it definitely, it definitely highlights a void in our culture that we would be remiss not to point out in the the women's women's um role in our culture and how it's not necessarily highlighted enough not even 
you know, in the movies, um, we could stand, we could stand to have more films that give women a little bit more agency, a lot more agency um, in the film so that they're not necessarily, with the, with the exception of um, Set It Off, um, they're not necessarily there, you know, just to be the arm piece of the dude, but they have, you know, we can see their own, their, we understand their journey. They have a, a backstory and, you know, the whole thing. And, and you know, I, I feel like it has to be said <laughs> and that, you know, as we, as, as we um, talk about the culture and, you know, there's always, there's always room for improvement. I do think that that's a place where, you know, as a culture, we can improve, especially, especially in our films. And there's, there's a void. So if any filmmaker out there, Hey man, we still, the, the women's, the women's story and the, and the women's um, narrative um, is still out there needing to be um, carved out and, and narrated so yeah yeah i i totally agree but i also like to see you know the aesthetics as well so but, yeah so <laughs> let's just find a common let's find a happy, a happy medium here <laughs> but, you know, i want to see i want to see that too but uh the next category this is a good one the hip hop right. hood classic now you might say ron you from the burbs how could you but you know, I had to get my hair cut. And oftentimes, man, the hair the barbershop was in the hood. You know what I'm saying? Just because you're in the burbs don't mean you don't have cousins in the hood. So we know what the hood is. So, you know, just don't hit me in the comments about what I know about the hood because a lot of y'all try to sell me these bootlegs back in the day in those same barbershops I'm talking about in Atlanta. So shout out to the hood. But uh, but yeah, these are the hood classes. I'm gonna go through a couple of them because it's been so long, and some of these are really hard to find. Like I, you know, preparing for the show. I wanted to go back and watch a couple of these. I couldn't even damn find it. I had to go back and look in my damn stores, see if I had the VHS tapes. I don't have no damn VCR. Yeah. He's no, that's real. Find these joints. So Baller Block, <laughs> Cash Money film, was kind of the answer to what P was doing at No Limit when he was putting out those films. Um, but I mean, Baller Blocking was a was a dope film. I mean, I, I, I vaguely remember pieces of it, but I know all the hot boys is in it, had big timers in it. Um, it was a dope film, and if anybody got a copy or has a link of where I can download it or stream it, please hit us in the comments with Baller Block and made a list. And I remember people trying to sell me this joint back in the day. <laughs> Another hood classic. Man, we don't talk about this film enough, but New Jersey Drive yes. is one of the hood classics of hip-hop of all time. I mean, I mean, New Jersey Drive. I mean, the soundtrack, we're going to get into that in a minute. It's, a, it's, it's another conversation. But New Jersey Drive was a dope film. Mm -hmm. uh, the third one on our list is I'm About It. I mean, P kind of, uh, and shout out to Mia X. Cause Mia X did a, a fine, fine yeah. job in the film. <laughs> um, yeah. yeah. You know, based upon the song About It, About It, I'm About It was a, was a hood classic, man. I mean, that really kind of cemented um, P as an urban rap legend. I hate the word urban, but a hood, a hood, a hood legend. You know what I'm saying? Underground legend is what I'm trying to go for. Um, so I'm about it, and I can't even find it, man. Um, I want to get a copy of it so I can kind of reflect on it. But I do remember that Mia X um, was dope in the film. Um, so I'm about it uh, as on the list. Another hood classic, Shadas. I mean, Shadas was <laughs> Shadas was referenced. That's my shit, man. A million rap songs. Um, mm -hmm. And it was a gritty, gritty, gritty film. Um, independent film. It was shot on a on a shoestring budget. But it was a dope film, man. And it was the most, one of the most bootleg films that I can remember. Like every barbershop, at the mall, every mall. I've had at least 100 people try to sell me a copy of Shot As. I probably bought three of them. Two right. got stolen. <laughs> one got broke. <laughs> and then you ever get the DVD? You ever get the DVD? And the bootleg yeah. man get you? Yeah. You home and shit is blank. Right. <laughs> you know, man, man. <laughs> but yo, <laughs> yeah. but yo, they got smart though. They got smart after a while. They used to have like these little portable DVD players. Oh, he <laughs> he's like, hey, man, it worked, man. It played real good. It played real good. He used to show it to you. <laughs> 
And yo, man, so man, shout out, yo, shout out to the bootleggers, man, back shout in the day. Yeah, uh, that's that, that's, that's, that's so funny because that's the that's the movie you think of. At least that's the movie that comes to mind when I think of bootleg DVD era. It's like like shotters. Shot us, man. Shot us, man. It was a great date movie, too. <laughs> For before Netflix and chill. Uh, and the last one is a hood classic. We're going to add some comedy to it, man. This one, man. <laughs> Don't be a menace while drinking your juice. Don't be a menace in South Central while drinking your juice in the hood. What classic. You about my mama. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, remember the gang initiation scene? We just like, man, we gotta, you gotta get in the game. Man. And he brought the rope that he had to do double touch. He was like, you got to get out the game. He's like, woo, yo, yo. And well, he he was with Shorty in the room, and she she went crazy. Her head split her. <laughs> yo, yo man. Uh, classic film, man. Classic, classic, classic. <laughs> Oh, did we have any honorable mentions on that one? I don't think we did. No, man. crazy enough. No, <laughs> <laughs> there should be. There should be. There should be. I feel like uh, tales tales from the hood should be somewhere in there, but I don't know if that's a hip hop film or not. But the Leprechaun in the Hood. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm gonna segue. I'm gonna segue from hood classics to underrated films. Um, let me go through this list real quick. Um, uh, they. Talk about the first one on the list, State Property 2. You had State Property Yo, 2 on the list. State Property 2, that movie is funny as hell, man. That <laughs> and like I don't care what nobody says. I know State Property, and that's one that we didn't we didn't really mention, but I know everybody tends to mention State Property 1. But State Property 2, that shit is funny as hell. And Nori puts on Actually, I should have added Nori on um, breakout on the breakout scene because Nori's performance in State Property Two is is awesome, man. Like State Property Two is one of those that I don't feel like we talk about enough, and we don't talk about how funny how funny that movie is, man. Is in Beanie Siegel. Beanie Siegel's great, um, and it is basically carried by Beanie, Dane, and Nori. And Nori's the one that surprises you. Like, it's it's hilarious, man. Crazy movie, crazy movie. Yeah. Next one on the list, I'm gonna go with Fresh. Fresh was a film that came out in 1994. Um, it has Sam uh, Samuel Jackson in it. Um, it also had Juan Carlo Esposito in it. Uh, mm -hmm. It was about this young guy that's um, in the hood, and he's playing. He's recalling the lessons uh, playing chess. You know what I'm saying to kind of navigate through his situations, man. So it's a uh it's hip hop film in its nature, but it's a lot, it's a slept on film that a lot of people don't talk about. So shout out to Fresh. Um, check it out when you if you get a chance. Uh the third one on the list is Higher Learning. Um, John Singleton film. Uh Ice Cube was in this one, Omar Epps was in this one, uh, Michael Rappaport was in this one. I think Jennifer Connolly was in this one. Uh, who else was in this one? Um Lawrence did Fishburne you, was in. Did you say Buster Rhymes? Yeah, Buster Rhymes is in yeah, this Buster one. Rhymes, yeah. uh, Lawrence Fish, Fishburne was in this one. Mm -hmm. It's a dope film. It's a dope film touching on race relations, the the different um, ideas. In a college, a college setting. On a college setting. Had a dope soundtrack. You know, this yeah. wasn't a hip hop song, but one of the dopest songs on the hip hop soundtrack was uh, that Raphael Sadiq joint. Yeah. Um, yeah. I can't find that song anywhere on Spotify, bro. It's not on streaming services. I think no. I, had to, I think I had to rip it from like I think it's on Apple Music, maybe. Mm. Yeah, that was a, all I ask of you. Come on, yeah, I, I ain't gonna belt it out, but um, but yo, man, it's a dope film, man, and it still holds up. I mean, a lot of the things, the themes in that film still have relevance to today. Yeah. Um, the next one, let's go back to. Now I'm going to end on a light note. I'm going to end on a light note. Hip-hop, Barry Gordy, it's really an R&B, they, they style it as an R&B film, but it has lots of hip-hop elements in it. You got the the, the B-boy, breakdancing, you got there's some rap elements in it. You know, um, The Last Dragon. I mean, martial arts and hip-hop have always been synonymous. You know, from the Wu-Tang Clan, and we're going to touch about on films that kind of influence the culture, but 
you can't talk about kung fu hip hop martial arts without talking about the last dragon I, I, it's just probably referenced in countless rap songs mm -hmm. you got show enough is one of the baddest villains of all time you got leroy green you got vanity i mean you just got a dope 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 movie that slept on i mean if you haven't seen this movie check it out uh if you haven't seen it you need your hip-hop car revoked um i wish this movie would have got a sequel i mean it's just a dope film and barry gordy his team got down on this joint um it's and it still holds up today it doesn't seem dated i mean it's got dated elements because of the clothes and right. sure enough would have probably got pop you know so that's probably not realistic in 2024 <laughs> um, but it was just dope man it was just dope you want to go into because you started to do it anyway you want to go into the next uh which ones you wish you had a sequel no no i got we got two more on the underrated film oh my fault we got my two fault. more we got two more uh we got three more actually. Uh, CB4. Oh, I yeah. Mean, I mean, come on, man. Ice Froggy Frog. <laughs> you know what I mean? Straight out of low cash. You know what I'm saying? That's a funny, funny film, man. And yeah. it, it, it kind of highlights how brilliant of a comedic mind that Chris Rock has. I mean, yeah. his show on HBO, and I hate that he never got another late night talk show gig because I think he would have been right. really funny. He would have been much right. more funnier than Jimmy Fallon or Jimmy Kimmel or these guys that we have now. Um, I think he would have been a natural progression after Arsenio Hall had right. that element. I think Keeney and Ivory Wayne's low key, not switching topics. He had a dope late night talk show, he but it, he just, I mean, didn't get picked up. I think it was on Fox. And I think if it had, he been on another network and he's another person that doesn't get his flowers, him and Robert Townsend, are <sighs> some of the most brilliant minds oh, in man. film mm. comedy history. But they don't even get their props. And I think Keenan and Ivory Wayne's, um, him and his brother Damon, Damon kind of carried a little bit further. But I think Keenan, I don't know if he just didn't want to do or he got blackballed, but he had the whole package to be like a leading man, for, not even in comedy, but he could have done dramas, he could have done action movies. I think he tried, but I think those movies weren't commercial, commercially successful. And right. they kind of put him into the back burner. But this... I mean, Keenan Ivory Wayne's was was uh, uh, is a, is a legend. Yeah, is a legend. Absolutely, is a legend. And and, and Robert Townsend, absolutely. And Robert, Robert Townsend. Yes. Uh, I'm gonna get to the last two of these real quick. So CB4 Belly, uh, Belly is underrated. I mean, visually, uh, it was Hype's first feature film. Hype Williams' first feature film. Music, noted music director. But. I mean, it just doesn't get talked about enough. I think the the plot wasn't the writing, the screenplay, and Ray, you can speak to this more than I can, wasn't that tight. But from a visual element, you know, I think it was it was a dope film. It doesn't get enough props. Yeah, I think Belly is one of those movies where it has all of our favorite rappers in it, and and we we couldn't wait to see our favorite rappers on screen with with the visual element to it. You know. Obviously, the the writing, um, just from a, I think, <laughs> you know, not to get like too too nerdy. I, I think the, you know, structurally speaking, it was fine. Like it's it's a good movie, um, and you know, it tells its story from beginning to end. I, I just think that the actual dialogue and the um, the character development. Um, you know, it could have been a little bit more nuanced. And, and some of that, too, is <clears throat> um, some of that, too, comes from the act of performance. Like, you know, sometimes a lot of um, you have an actor that comes to set with their own questions and their own ideas about the character. And that brings out the nuance that you that you may look for. And I think that um Belly, belly didn't strike me as that kind of movie, you know. Where you have, you know, you have motherfuckers coming up and be like, "Well, you know, I really thought that, you know, that it, I, I do believe that there were probably moments where, you know, somebody would say, "Hey, this character wouldn't say anything like this." Like I believe things like that happen, but um, you know, we also can't. We we're not watching Belly for those elements either. You know what I mean? Like we we want to be entertained. And sometimes, you know, we're we're not looking for an Oscar 
Oscar winning performance. So I think yeah. I think Belly did what it was supposed to do. It did, it did, it did. Now the last one on this list is um I don't know if it's is if it's underrated, but I know it's not talked about enough. Um South Central. OB o, OG Bobby J. You know what I'm saying? Um another one that's been referenced in numerous rap hip hip hop lyrics. The story was good, man, because it was about a father uh coming out of the incarceration, coming out of the system to a land as foreign. I think he did 10 years. I think he might have did 10 years or he had 15 years or something like that. So his son's now becoming into a, a, a young man. He's a teenager. And he's trying to save his son from the elements uh, in South Central uh, Los Angeles that led him to a life of, of, of prison, incarceration, and also could lead to death. Uh, so it's just a powerful, powerful film about a, a father and a son, about generations, uh, removed, you know, the impact that we have on our children, the legacy that we leave. And it was just a powerful, powerful scene. That brother, I, f- I forget his name. Let me, I want to give him his props. <laughs> I was like, about to ask, I was about to ask you that I was uh South Central, the brother, the actor, he had a powerful, powerful performance. Um uh Glenn Plummer. Glenn, Glenn Plummer. Yeah. Um man, what a great what a great film, man. If you haven't seen it, watch it. I think it's a great <laughs> film. We're going to have a Father's Day episode, and that'll be one of the things that I mentioned that you should see. Not all of, all of us have been uh, prisoner uh, to, the, to the correctional system uh, or, or know people that have been involved in it, but it's just it's just a, it's a human story, um, and it's an American story uh, told through the lenses of black men, sons and fathers in, in South Central L.A., and a powerful, powerful performance. So shout out to the crew to the South Central. We don't talk about that film enough. We talk about Menace to Society. We talk about Boys in the Hood. But South Central that came out in 1992 is really up there with them. I mean, I think you could say, you can make an argument, you know, that it could be better than those films. But um, but hey, those yeah. are the underrated films, man. So yeah, hey, take us to the um, the movies that inspired hip hop. Movie non hip hop movies that yeah the non the non hip hop movies he's a he's <clears throat> on the periphery he's a, outside the culture yeah and uh, you know I think, I think a lot of these are self explanatory from you know if you're a hip hop head you know what it is you know Scarface <laughs> you know like how many how how many rappers especially 90s rappers um, reference that movie. It's, you know, it's a staple. Um, we got The Godfather. Godfather, which is um, one of my favorite. Um, Godfather 2 is my favorite movie. One of my favorite movies, I would say like top three, just movies uh, in any of all time. God, and it's crazy because Godfather 1 is a masterpiece. And it's one of those where it's like, like Godfather, Godfather one is insane. It's epic. It's, it's, it's one of the greatest movies of all time. And it's like, how do you even outdo it? And, you know, Godfather two is just insane. Um, So yeah, we got Godfather. Bronx Tale. Mm. Bronx Tale. I love Bronx Tale, man. Love Bronx Tale, um, you know another father, um, another father son movie. Um, you know the the working class blue collar father trying to keep his son out of the streets, who's influenced by the by the um, by the street street dude. Um, yeah, yeah, awesome, awesome movie. Um, next, Shaolin and the Wu Tang. <laughs> Shaolin style, Shaolin style. Yeah, man. I mean, I think I think that one is, is self-explanatory. Um, and you know, we 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 talk about it from time to time, but you can't emphasize enough kung fu and karate and martial arts influence on hip hop as a culture, um, and also and also comic book culture too. We don't talk about enough with comic books, but also just martial arts in general, um, how much of a 
heavy hand and um, the the influence that martial arts has on hip hop. Um, next, Goodfellas. Goodfellas, come on, come on, Ray Liotta. <laughs> Ray Liotta, man. Joe Pesci. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's my favorite. That's one of my favorite gangster films of all time. Yeah, that's one of my favorite. I I got it up there with that and Casino and Godfather too. But I mean, Goodfellas is up there. Yeah, no, Goodfellas is up there. Um, a lot of that. Um, fun fact: a lot of Goodfellas was shot in uh where I, where I was born in um South Ozone Park, Queens. Um in like Jamaica, Queens and all of that. Cause it used to be a very um, heavy Italian neighborhood. But um, my grandmother told me that my grandmother, uh, you know, she, she remembers Goodfellas for, for that reason. Um, when she lived there. Um, next movie, King of New York. The King of New York. <laughs> Reference in a whole bunch of hip hop lyrics. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, just the idea just the idea of King of the King of New York. Like, I, I feel like that was especially obviously in the nineties, um, just how important it was and how much of a thing it was to strive to strive for, to be the King of the New York. And, you know, it, it made for some great, some great moments and some great conversations. It did. Uh, yeah. We got two more. Casino. Casino. I mean, I mean, just think about it, man. You know, Nas kind of took the whole casino aesthetic. For it was written. You know what I'm saying? I you know, always think of Street Dreams when I now like I can't I can't get the Street Dreams video out out my mind when I think of Casino. Right, and you think about. I always want to recreate casino, right? I want. I want to take my lady out to Las Vegas, make it just look like ginger with a gold sequins dress on me, with like a pink suit, some white patent leather loafers. You know what I'm saying? Smoking a cigar, that whole. I mean, then you uh even talk about the casino reference. Um, I think on even American Gangster, I think on Fallen, mm. Jay references casino. I forgot the. He um he referenced it, the the J lyric that comes to mind to me is off of Kingdom Come where he says too much Sam Rothstein. Yeah, I was a lost one. You know, so too yeah, much lost one. I think he was rapping. I think he's referencing Dame on that, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. So um, yeah, man, Casino. He, I mean, J was inspired by Casino a lot, you know, because he, yeah. he referenced it, and Nas was too. So it's a dope, dope film, man. It's a uh, um. I mean, it's a classic, man. Martin Scorsese got down on that joint, man. It's just, yeah. just a classic, man. Just a classic. Just a classic. On the list, I right? Got, yeah, and I have um, one. I have. We have one more on the list, but I have one to add. Since we, I mean, you know, obviously, you, you, we talking about hip hop, so we, you got to go down the gangster movies. Um, but we would be remiss to not talk about Dolomite. Oh. Shit! How do we forget that? One? <laughs> Rudy Ray Moore, man. Um, in fact, I think it was. Um, I th I think it was. It was two people that put me on the Rudy Ray Moore and Dolomite. Robin Harris. Um, Robin Robin Harris used to talk about, but but in hip hop, Big Boy. Um, I remember, uh, and I can't re I can't remember the lyric, but. Um, I used to study uh, Rudy Raymore and something, something when I was a kid, you know, and just that whole that whole culture, man. I think uh, you can't have a list without that. Can't have it. Dolomite, Dolomite was is is a hood classic, one number one, and it's also one of the archetypes of what hip hop was built on. So mm -hmm. you can't have a hip hop discussion without talking about Dolomite, man. So shout out to Dolomite. And I have I have one honorable mention. One honorable mention. It's not on our list, but it should have been. Carlitos mm -hmm. Way, man. Oh yeah, Carlitos, Carlitos Way. Way. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Got okay, it. I reloaded. Okay, we yeah we know we need to have a film festival, man. We need to have like a watch party. It could be virtual. We gotta get the technology behind it, but we can have like every week we pick a film, a hip hop film festival presented by According to Hip Hop. Hopefully, a sponsor so we can mm -hmm. pay for it. And uh, we'll just do it, man. We'll do it 
you know, in real time, we take get a park, get a big screen, and show some movies like in the summer. Maybe next summer we'll do that. Have the, the lawn series of according to hip hop. <laughs> we just show like hip hop films, and we no do doubt. it for the next the few years. Let's get into the next category. The next category is man, I wish they had a part two. Like a, a film that was so dope that you wish you had had a sequel. I'm gonna go in order. Um I mean, romantic comedies generally don't have sequels. They usually have happy endings. The boy gets the girl. They kiss. The music plays. It's over. I can't think of too many romantic comedies that have sequels. I know they're working on a hitch. Let's talk to maybe a hitch part two. But I can't think of... Um, maybe... Correct me if I'm wrong, audience. Put it in the chat. Is there a romantic comedy that ever had a sequel? I'm like thinking. You gotta have me Google, man. I mean, I can't think of one. I mean, well, Sex in the City was that a romantic comedy? I guess, but that's like you know, I don't know if that's like a. I when that. I think about a romantic comedy, I think about there's a. Don't take my hip hop pass, but Ron, you know what I'm talking about in the film world. They call it a meet cute. It's called a meet cute, and there's a guy, there's a girl, they meet. And there's like like some type of arc where they have a challenge in their relationship, and they, in the end, all is well, right? So, but I can't think of one. So, so Brown Sugar, I wish we have a part two. Mm-hmm. Maybe they're older now, they got kids, and then now they're into the you know, the hip hop world. You know what? Scratch that, man. I just yo, the best man is a romantic comedy that had a sequel. That's what I was trying to I, like. I knew it was one of those Tay Dig movies yeah it was the best man so brown sugar could have a sequel now that this 20 years removed from that story what does hip-hop look like in 2024 they got kids now maybe the kids are going to go to college they're about 18 years old yeah. i think i would like to see that you know what i'm saying people aging out of what the hip-hop that they they liked or grew up on now it's a different sound how do you navigate that world what does hip-hop media look like in the podcasting game now the xxl is kind of phasing out and it's a website more you know the web and podcasting has kind of changed hip-hop media i think that'll be good to explore today so i think brown sugar part two is good and if, you, if you do make the movie make sure you holler at vey and jv they'll write it up and you know we'll make we'll we'll make it under on 100 according to hip-hop we'll make it under on our brother okay whatever appreciate the plug yeah gotcha bro gotcha bro uh, the Last Dragon, man. We want to see sequels, man. As a hip hop movie, I want to see what Bruce Leroy would have done next. He defeated Shonen. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe he yeah. goes to he's in Harlem, right? So maybe he goes to Brooklyn, and and it's a Brooklyn, you know, kung fu master, right? Maybe he goes Last, to the Bronx. I was about to say Last Dragon could be a franchise, man. That could right. be a franchise, right? You know, you can have Last Dragon two. He go mm-hmm. to Brooklyn. Maybe he goes. Bruce Lee Road goes to L.A. You know what I'm saying? Maybe he goes to San Francisco, and it's like some kind of different type of right. Chinese discipline that's in the Bay Area that's kind of kind of you know throw a, throw a loop at Bruce Lee Roy. All right, so that should have had a sequel. That should have had a sequel. Um, wish I had a sequel. I'm about it. I mean, again, I can't find the original. I'm about it. So I wish they would make a part two. So I can at least stream it on Amazon Prime or Netflix or something. You know what right. I mean? Just something, man. Put Romeo in that joint. You know right, what I'm saying? What's right, right. look like today? <laughs> uh, what else is on the list? Man, I wish I had a part two. New Jack City. I mean, we talked about it on the last show, but your, your guy did the stage play, and that kind of got me thinking, maybe there should be a New Jack City remake, right? Maybe there should be a sequel. I think Ice-T was talking about it at some point. There could have been one, but... I don't I know. That. I believe that. I don't know. Um, and maybe not a part two, but I think a remake, which is essentially a part two, I think there should be a reboot of New York on the cover. Yeah. I mean, I think that's just appropriate for the time. And I know they were talking about it, but it just never got off the ground. Um, yeah. I'm going to be, I'm going to be honest. I'm not like a fan of reboots and like in general, but I'm here for New York Undercover. I'm here for New York Undercover because they did such a good job of highlighting the culture. And I think like that's the like that's the X factor that won't let it feel forced and corny. 
and that if they continue to, um, cause what I would love for some show to bring back is music in shows. You know what I mean? Like just the, the element of music, you know, whether it's, um, ending the episode, like, you know, in the in the club like um, New York Undercover did, but just incorporating the element of music, I think, goes goes far for me. It goes far, man. But you know what? There was a show that came on in like the two thousands, like two thousand two, called uh, Peter Facinelli and Bill Bellamy and uh, Tiffany Amber Thies and Fast Lane. Mm. Uh, it had like I think Mick G directed it. I think Big Boy from Big Boy's Neighborhood was was on a couple episodes. I think Snoop popped in a couple times, but they played the music. I remember them walking in the club and they played like uh, that Nori joint. Um, what was that joint? Uh, Yo, oh, girl, just look. Came to party. Yeah, came to party. Oh, girl yeah. was looking at me. You know what I'm saying? She's a haggle, but no, nah, I'm not bagging her. So they played yeah. a lot of hip hop joints on that on that uh, on that uh, on that show. But yeah, I think New York Undercover is so appropriate, man, to show the culture, to show what it was all about. I think it, w- it will come back authentic. And I know you're not a big fan of remakes, but what did you think about the Miami Vice joint with Colin Farrell and Jamie Foxx? You didn't feel that? I'm good on it. You're good on that? What about, I know you like this one, though. I know you like this one. 21 Jump Street. I'm good on it. Oh, man, you tripping, man. I don't, I don't like a reboot, man. I don't like a because you know what it is? And I, you know, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna harp on it on for too much. But there's too many talented writers out there doing original work, good original work, for us to reboot anything. And just culturally, like let that time be its time. What's gonna be the material that defines our time now? If everything is being if everything is being rebooted and remade, like, nah, man, leave it, leave leave it there, leave it in the time when it was, because it, it had its time. Because most of the time, it's not good, or it's just not. It, it there's really no purpose in bringing it back, outside of just wanting to grab money. And for me, you know, there there has to be a, a why. Like, why are we presenting this in this format in 2024? And there has to, you know, does it speak to what's going on in the world? You know, like what, what, what's the why? And if, if the why ain't strong enough for me, fuck it. You know I got you, man. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Let's get some new ideas, man. Let's get some new, new ideas. ideas. Let's some new ideas. I think that was the last one. I think that was the last one. I think that was the last one. Uh yeah, about it. New Jack City, New York Undercover, mm-hmm. The Last Dragon, Brown Sugar movies that I wish had a part two in hip hop. Yeah. All right, so we got the big boy category now. We got two more categories left. We got we a music podcast at heart. So let's let's end it on the soundtrack. Let's end it on the music. So the best film, our favorite film. Mm-hmm. Hey, give us the the honors. And don't kill us in the comments. These are just our favorite, our favorites. These are not like we're not ranking these, you know, we're not doing like this is number one. These are just our favorites, ones that we love. You know, if you if you if there's some that you feel like need to be up there by all means, but these are just our favorites. Our favorites, that's right. Juice, juice Friday. That's right. Boys in the Hood. That's right. Crush Groove. No doubt. Reverend Rum was great in Crush Groove, by the way. He so, was. He was. He, he was good. He was good. Can, he can act. He can act. Right. Right. House Party. Iconic. Iconic. And Paid in Full. An honorable mention. Honorable mentions, of course, New Jack City, right. um, Dead Presidents. I put Dead Presidents on because I, I love that man. Please, Dead Presidents, Above the Rim, and last, B 
Baby Boy. Baby Boy, Baby Boy. Baby Boy. Yo, those are our favorite films, man. But I'm going to give you a quick rundown why we picked them. Juice, I mean, Omar Epps, Tupac Shakur, show, showcase DJ culture. So hip hop, the soundtrack was crazy. Again, you know, Tupac was one of the, the most villainous performances of all time. It was a great, great, great film. Friday, a comedic element, had a message in the film, um, showcased Ice Cube's talent, uh, introduced Chris Tucker, John Witherspoon did his thing. Nia Long did her thing. I mean, it's just a classic. Uh, Feel-good movie, too. Boys in the Hood. Again, a darker film, John Singleton's first, uh, that talked about gang uh, activity in South Central L.A. Uh, Cuba Gooden Jr. did a good job. Morris Chestnut. Dope, dope, dope film. Um, had a good soundtrack as well. Crush Groove. I mean, loosely based on the uh, evolution of Def Jam Records or Rush Management. Uh, just a great, great, great film. Uh, and also, me personally, why I like the film, not only did it showcase the Beastie Boys, the Fat Boys, um, uh, it, it, it Run DMC, um, it just, it was just a, just a dope showcase for so many t- talented artists. But Sheila E was in the film, and, you know, they did play a couple Prince songs in the film. So Prince songs in a hip-hop film, I mean, that just puts it up to the top of the list, man. I Love Bazaar is one of the greatest songs of all time, man. I mean, even that extended version, man, it's like... Come on, know, like, come on. I mean, that extended version of, of Love are Bazaar. You, so are, you, are you a Prince of... Sorry not to get off topic. Are you a Prince of Michael Jackson? But you know me. Yeah, yeah, I know. I know. I, just want, to, I want you to say it out loud. Though. <laughs> I, I'm a Prince guy. I'm a Prince guy. <laughs> Mike is a Mike guy. And we had a debate last uh, a couple of shows ago, what was better? And we did a, a track by track breakdown of Purple Rain and and Thriller. You know, Thriller is a tough record, um, and I didn't really articulate my argument well of, for Purple Rain because Purple Rain to me is more of an R and B rock record, mm-hmm. um, and then Thriller is just like a compilation of hits. And if we want to talk about Massive you know, pop hits. Massive pop hits versus <clears throat> a rock record that has a concept, that's an album that has like a beginning, middle, and end. That's the argument I didn't get a chance to make. Purple Rain is even, to me, lyrically better than Thriller. I mean, let's just yeah. let's think about it. Like Beat It, I mean, the lyrics to Beat It or the lyrics to The Beautiful Ones. I mean, let's just be, let's just keep mm. it above. The mm. lyrics to Thriller or Take Me With You uh, let's go crazy or purple rain. Let's just be for real. Even let's take the biggest songs from that record. I know I'm going. We talk about movies. So purple rain is a movie, and that could have been on the list of movies that influenced hip hop because purple mm-hmm. rain was did influence a lot of hip hop. Let's take the when doves cry, the biggest record from purple rain, to the biggest record on Thriller, which is Thriller, mm-hmm. right? And let's look compare them lyrically. Let's let's be, let's keep it real. I mean, I people don't people people yeah. don't get up in their car unless it's Halloween or something. That's just me. They don't get in their car and just pop on the record Thriller. But I can pop on, you know what I'm saying? Take me with you if I'm on a vacation. I can put on, you know, When Doves Cry. I can put on The Beautiful Ones, Going to Work, Eating Dinner. But I'm not going to put on the biggest record on Thriller, Thriller. I'm not going to put on Thriller just washing my car. I would look weird. Like, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to bring this full circle real quick. Would it be, um, and I'm I'm definitely oversimplifying this here, so, but is it, is it a um, legitimate argument that this is comparable to Kendrick and Drake and that, you know, Drake really is Michael Jackson in that, you know, Thriller, you know, it's just a compilation of hits, whereas Purple Rain, you're getting a little bit more under the surface, you're getting a little bit more, uh, just a little bit more substance um, than the album that is, like you said, a compilation of massive, massive hit records that are undeniable and has the ability to make any person dance at any time holds up the test of time, but then you have this other piece that was made for this movie and is made as a 
as actual narrative in the same way that K dot does. Yes, the argument could be made, but I can also counter that argument, right? With a Drake line from Family Matters. <laughs> Maybe I'm printing you. <laughs> yeah. Mike, because you was hoping his features would change so he could make songs with Mike. <laughs> you know, because Kendrick did make songs with Taylor Swift and Rob. <laughs> that was a clear. That was a clear. Right. <laughs> yeah, we're going on. We're going away. We're going away. We're going way <laughs> off the deep path. But that was, damn, I forgot what category I was on. Favorite was film. I was complaining about that. Because they had two print <laughs> records sung by Sheila E. in the film. Blair yeah. Underwood did a dope job. It was a dope record. Uh, dope, dope. Dope movie. Rick Rubin did his thing. Man, Curtis Blow, shout out to the whole film. House Party. House Party was so dope because it showed, uh, it had so many different elements and it showed that, you know, before Friday, you know, it was a comedic film that, you know, this, there was hip hop in the suburbs, man. We weren't all in the hood. It was right. some kids having fun, going to school, right. fly, talking to girls. Kind of like how we came up, right? You know what I'm saying? We weren't, you know, we were, we knew folks in the hood. We always got that hood element in us, but um, it was just fun, man. You know, it had a, some elements of danger, but it was just fun teenage experiences, right? Mm-hmm. It wasn't too heavy. Yeah. It was just kids vibing out the hip hop, having yeah. a good time, right? Yeah. And then paid in full. And paid in full might be, you know, in its time. It came out in 2002, directed by Charles Stone. Shout out to Charles Stone III, by the way. Uh, he directed Drumline. He directed uh, a film with Bernie Mac, Mr. 3000. He did a lot of videos for A Living Color. Uh, he did 911 is a Joke with Public Enemy, uh, Foo Schnickens, Tribe Called Quest. So he was a dope, dope director in the roots. Uh, what they directed that video. Um, it was. Oh, I didn't know he did what they do. Yeah, he did what, what they Ooh. do. That. And one of the dopest hip hop videos in history. Yeah. So Charles Stone III, uh, the way he shot paid in full stylistically from a, I'm going, I'm nerding out right now from a cinematography perspective. Go ahead. It could be one of the most beautifully shot hood films that we have. I know John St- Singleton and Spike are known as, as auteurs, as directors, but as far as like, you know, the, the way that the, the, the shots are designed, you know, the shot list and the way that the camera movement, and the way it's edited, the way they got down on paid in full is highly understated. Even like the way that it visually looks, like the, mm-hmm. the color palette of the film, mm-hmm. a level above quote unquote hip hop films. And you, cook, you cooking right now. Go ahead, man. Paid in full is, 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 is just so dope. So that's why we put it on the list. And then you got the performance from Cameron, Makai Pfeiffer, Wood mm-hmm. Harris. I think Regina Hall's in the film as well. Um, this is a dope, dope film. Dope, dope, yeah. dope film. Yeah. But that's our favorite films, man. I know you might have different ones. We might have left some out. I know we have some honorable mentions. Vey, you want to hit us with honorable mentions? Um, no, we hit them with the honorable mentions. You get uh, New Jack City, Dead Presidents, Above the Rim, Baby Boy. Yeah. Yeah. Man, awesome, man. Awesome. Now, the final category, brother, I bestow the honor of you, according to Hip Hop, Film Awards, whatever you want to call this damn podcast, from around the culture. <laughs> The soundtracks. Let's get into that, bro. The best soundtracks of all time in hip hop oh, history. All right. I feel like I should do the honorable mentions first. What you think? What you think? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hit hit him with the honorable mentions. All right, all right, all right. Honorable mentions. Who's the man? Great soundtrack. Great soundtrack. High school high. Whew. High school high. Crazy. Crazy, crazy. My crazy. favorite song off of that. Woo Garment, Woo Wear. Woo Wear, come on. Do what you want, Captain, baby. Yeah, Captain man. Donna got crazy. Meth on yeah. the hook. You know what I'm saying? Even yeah. Rizza. Yeah. Uh, like Dimo Crystal, Chris Crystal, Sean Crystal, by Tanya Ugo. Bobby Digital got down on that joke. Bobby, Bobby Digital got down. <laughs> that was Bobby Digital. That was, that was Bobby, Bobby Digital. digital. <laughs> <laughs> um, then we got 8 Mile. Honorable mention. Um, mm-hmm. I, I I actually love that Eight Mile soundtrack between um, the Eight Miles and Running with uh, Freeway and Jay. Um, there was a joint. I think it's called "I Just Want to Love You." Uh, 50, 50 joint where he was snapping on everybody. Um, that was a that was a hard little soundtrack. 
Yeah, uh, it, it had Wankster on that joint, and then okay. it had uh, Gangsta uh, had a joint on there, and then mm -hmm. uh, had uh, Rock Kim had a joint on there too. Yeah, yeah. What was the Eminem song? The um, dun 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 dun. Ah, oh, shit. Now I'm, the beat is um, dun 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 dun. dun, dun. You know what I'm talking about? Uh, you talking about Love Me? Nah, or, not Love or, Me. Or, I don't care. It's our Rabbit Run. Rabbit Run. Rabbit Run. I did yeah. like that joint. I like that joint. Yeah. Um, then we got Streets is Watching. Streets Ooh. is Watching. That's Ooh. tough. That's tough. Yeah, that's tough. <laughs> that's a tough that's one. Tough. Um, a then we got Great White Hope. Remember that? Great White Hope. What was on Great White Hope? I, I think it was. Um, well, Method Man Bring the Pain was on it. Um, but also, uh, shoot, shoot him up, shoot him up, shoot him up, shoot, shoot, shoot him up. Uh, Bone Thugs. Uh, that's uh, I'm scared. Oh, see, now I gotta look. I've uh, got you under my skin. Biz Marky was on that joint. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we got was, it. DJ Premier. Yeah, no, uh, because, hold on. on joint E40 was on that joint. Um, Cooley high, that's what I was thinking of. Cooley high. Camp low. Camp yeah. low. That's what I was thinking of. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Um, um okay, and then two more honorable mentions. Don't be a menace. Win awards, baby. I mean, that's it. <laughs> Don't win the wars. Uh, I think up north trip is on that too. Mob deep up north trip. Um, and then the other one, Sunset Park. Remember that? Mm, mm, um, MC, MC Light, keep on, keep keeping on. Cause you're dun, 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 dun. Right, <laughs> right. <laughs> he said, uh... <laughs> yeah, No, 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 that was dope. That was dope. That was dope. I, I was yeah. looking for Who's the Man soundtrack um, <laughs> again. I was, I, I kind of wanted to go back real quick. Yeah, yeah. There was a couple joints on there. I, I want to say. Yeah, 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 yeah. The Pete, the Pete Rock joint. The Pete Rock joint was. Um, Pete Rock was on the High School High soundtrack too. I think he yeah. did one with Large Professor on that joint, which was dope. And then he had on Who's the Man. It was the one with um. A House of Pain had this the title track, and then he had um. Um, Pete Rock is what's on the menu. Pete Rock and CL Smooth. That's what I was thinking about. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Yeah. Any of those could have made the list, man, of our yeah. favorites. But it was, um, you know, it is what it is, man. We only had a couple favorites we could squeeze in. Yeah. All right. Um, so our favorite soundtracks, New Jersey Drive. Jesus Christ. I cannot, I can't explain how, how great this soundtrack is. The fact that, one, it, it features mostly artists from New Jersey, which is awesome. But then just the... Um, you know, songs that stand out to me, um, Keith Murray, um, East West, um, uh, Ill Out Scratch, Don't Shut Down on the Player. Of course, of course, Outkast, Beamer, uh, Benza Beamer, um, Queen Latifah, I, I can't forget New Jersey. Um, Red Man got a joint, Red Man got a joint on there too, that's crazy. I mean, that whole that whole soundtrack top to bottom is just masterpiece, man. It's masterpiece. It's, it's got it's got um shit, poetry of darkness on there, burn rubber. It's got uh through the window, Coolio. Uh yep. it's got MC8, ain't nothing but killing. Yeah. It got Keith Murray on that joint. It got Benzo Abima, as you said. Uh it's got even Frankie Beverly and Mays on the soundtrack before I let go. <laughs> before I let go. And yo, that was like it got Biggie, can't you see, with total on it? Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, yo, and also because you know this was it had two parts. Did you know it, it was two parts? It did have it did have two parts. But yeah, you can't, you can't find volume two anywhere. It's crazy. I was trying to find it. It's like it's yeah. not on, it's not on streaming services or nothing. But it, the second part had um, had uh, nobody beats the biz on it. Mm -hmm. it had, um, it was a Mob Deep song on there too, right? Ah, uh, yeah, was that Mob Deep? Was it a Mob Deep? Uh, football Squad. It was a naughty, but it was a naughty by nature song. Naughty by then, naughty by nature. You're right. Had a boot camp click song. Heads ain't ready. Was on that joint. Yeah. Uh, 
What else? Yeah. OC was on that joint. OC, mm-hmm. Organized Noise, uh, yeah. J. Rudy Damage with Primo. But yeah. You can't find that joint, man. It was like, I that can't was, even of a soundtrack that had two parts. Right. That was uh, that was Tommy Boy, right? Was that Tommy Boy? What label was that? That, that, was, that? that was Tommy Boy. Yep, it was Tommy Boy. Shout out to Tommy Boy, man. Yeah, hey, man. Yeah, Tommy Boy, bro. Yo, yo. Uh, they, to me, that's, that's one of their best releases. Oh, without a doubt. Without a doubt. You know, now, well, well, it wasn't De La Soul, Three Feet High and Rising was on Tommy Boy, right? One of the best releases. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> one, one of the best. One of yeah. one, one, one of many. Yeah, I just wanted to, you know, just to yeah. call that, bring that to your attention. So. Yeah. <laughs> so we got New Jersey Drive. What's the second one? Get Rich or Die Trying. Yo, that's a great soundtrack, man. man. That's Hustler's man. Ambition, man. Hustler's Ambition, man. Window Come Shopper. On. Window Such Shopper. Ambition. Window Shopper. Best Friend. Best Friend. Great, great singles. Um, The joint with M.O.P., when death becomes you, Ooh, that's vicious, bro. Yeah, that was um, also Mace. Uh, Mace was on. What's what, hold on? What's the name of that song? What's the name of that song? What's the name of that song? The officer. I don't know officer where he was dissing um, Loon. He dissed Loon and Fabulous. You remember that? I remember that joint. I remember that joint. Yeah. I remember that joint. Uh-huh. Um. 50 this AZ on that. I don't know why he did that. That's the only thing I was like, why, what what AZ do, man? Uh, you know, I think around the time there was, I guess that was some uh some residual shots there because Nas was kind of subliminally dissing 50 around that era. So yeah. he probably was going to the not to call AZ low hanging fruit, but he was probably trying to navigate past yeah. Nas and try to bait him into something by going after AZ, you know. Yeah. Uh, Mob Deep was heavy on this record too. Mob Deep had yes. like two, two, three joints on here, man. Yeah. And, uh, and how did I forget? How I, how I forget the number eight, ten, the last song on the joint? I whip your head, boy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, I I felt like this was uh, this soundtrack was such a great G Unit compilation. Um, the one, you know, everybody at their maximum superpowers, you know. Of course, that's when MOP joined Mob Deep. You know, the whole team was on. I think uh, Spider Low Two was on it a lot, and um, you know, and that was. I feel like that was also Fifty at his peak, at his at his peak popularity, and it it sounds it sounds like a G Unit Fifty project, but enough of the team gets gets shine on it, which is dope. Yeah, 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 and it's got like three hits like best yeah. friend I'm for the ladies you know what i'm saying that's a hit mm-hmm. uh you got hustler's ambition i love ambition yeah man uh, then you got window shopper as a hit and if i'm keeping it a bean vein and i don't want to take us down a rabbit hole we compare hip hop films 8 mile versus oh boy you know get rich or die trying the lead song from 8 mile was lose yourself and the lead song from you know, get Richard Dodd trying Hustle's Ambition. I'm going Hustle's Ambition, bro. That's just me, man. The one I play more, if I check my, if you were to go yeah. get my phone and check yeah. my Spotify list, yeah, I play okay. Hustle's Ambition more. I'm not mad at that. I'm not mad at that. I feel like obviously Lose Yourself is the bigger record, but you know, there's something about, uh, this, there's something about, for me, I'm just a sucker for a soul sample for starters. But there's right. just something about that hustle's ambition that just I want to turn things in my life because I hustle. Yeah. It, yeah. Resonates. it resonates. It resonates with me more, and I want to kind of you know elaborate on it because it kind of it just is a difference between music. And a lot of people say we hate on Eminem on this platform. We don't. I think Eminem was a dope lyricist, and he has his own pocket. But when I hear the lyrics to Eight Mile. Uh, lose yourself you know it does it does have you know athletes have used it to kind of pump them up but when i hear hustle's ambition it's like he's speaking to me i got the energy to win i'm full of adrenaline you know what i'm saying right. it's like he's now narr- it's certain things that eminem can't articulate about our experience that's right. why i don't have him high on my list personally right that 50 yeah. you know, i'm not in that street life you know what i'm saying but i can relate to hustling i can relate to trying to make it or having a dream 
So yeah. the lyrics, lyrically, I'm in that direction as opposed to mom spaghetti, palm sweaty. You know what I'm saying? I'm just yeah. not there mentally. But yeah. I'm there with 50. You know? Yeah, you don't you don't hear a lot about, you know, I guess black men uh or black people uh throwing up on themselves. <laughs> you know, we get nervous. Uh but <laughs> Nah. You know, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, nah, I, I feel you on that. I feel you. On that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's um, next on the list? I'm about it. Yo, I'm about, about it. I speak it. to that again, man. That's like, you know, I, I, we included I'm about it on the list, not because it's such a great, great piece of cinematic literary devices. It's just that it's just, it's a testament of the time, like 1997, 96. You know, P, you know, Pac is gone, Big is gone, and uh, Outkast is doing their thing. Wu-Tang is still bubbling with Wu-Tang forever. Mob is doing their thing. Nas is kind of resurfacing, going to come back with I Am. Jay is about to take the game on a stranglehold because 97 is volume one. Um, E-40, Too Short is still doing their thing on the West. Spice won those guys. Uh, Dr. Dre is kind of like gearing up. He's not really active because Aftermath came out, really didn't hit that well. Eminem is going to come around 80, 98, 99. But the year of 1997, you know, LL is like, I think the Phenomenon record came out in, in 97, I think. 90, 97 was Bad Boy and, and No Limit. Yeah, so yeah, yeah like, exactly, Bay. It was Bad Boy, No Limit. And I yeah. doubt it is a, is a, uh, cinematic emblematic art, artifact of the time of, of Master P. So, and he was ahead of his time because he was really pushing, you know, those 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 B movies, those hood movies. Yeah. He was putting out product. He right. was treating the game like a hustle. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, I remember going on the school bus and well, shout out to Corey. Corey used to have every No Limit album. And they all had this the same. I think it was Pen and Pixel. I forgot the name of the yeah. company. Yeah, signed the covers, but it was just like a. It was a showpiece. It was a showcase. And then you had yeah. Skull Dunkery, you had Fiend, and you had Mia X, you had Mercedes, you had uh Yo, what's those guys? Uh I mean Kane so and Abel. Kane and Abel, C Murder, mm -hmm. uh you had Mac, you know, you had Mystical, uh Silk the Shaka. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's just Young Bleed. How you do that bleed. there? How you do that there, man? Ooh, you know, just ooh, classic it was testament. Not, I'm about it is a testament of the time. So that's mm -hmm. why we included it on the list. And if you have a copy, please send it to your boy. We'll send you a, a t-shirt in exchange. Yeah. All right. Next. Juice. I mean, come on, man. Ooh. Come on, man. I mean, man. I mean, we always talked about it ad nauseum, but I mean, Bishop, breakout role for Omar Epps. Mm -hmm. Um I mean, it's just a dope fluent film. I think Queen Latifah made an appearance in it, right? The soundtrack is crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Uptown, Uptown Anthem. Like, yes. Um, and know honestly, I was going to say, Know the Ledge, this might not be a popular uh, opinion because um, Rakim's um, discography is so, so great. But Know the Ledge is actually one of my favorite Rakim songs. Mm. Like I, I love, like I love the way it comes on with the bass line, the doom, 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 and then the way he comes on, like the shit is just crazy, and it helps in the movie. You know, uh, Q is mixing it, and they they mix that knocking niggas out, uh, knocking right. it, like it, it's just right, 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 like right, right. oh my god, like this shit is crazy. So yeah, no, no, the ledge is one of my favorite uh, rock him songs. Man. Yo, man, yo, so juices without. Without, without, without even explanation. I mean, we can talk about it all day. We might like, again. We're gonna do. We're gonna do our Cisco and Eve one of these days. We're just gonna take a movie and really dissect it. You know what I'm saying? Right now, we just give you the overview of the yeah. favorites in hip hop history. Uh, but but the juice is, is without question. What's the next one, Bay? Above the rim. Above the rim. <sighs> Man, because um, listen, listen. I gotta make sure. I gotta make sure real quick my one song because it's, it's it's escaping me but i gotta make sure yes yes my favorite tupac song pour out a little liquor 
Pour out a little liquor. Pour out a little liquor. And I know that's Thug Life, but it's a Tupac song. I love that song. Of course, you know, you got Regulators, you got um, SWV, anything. Um, Dog Pound got a record on there. That's H Town, Part Time Lover. Part Time Lover, all that. Um, That soundtrack, man, is nuts. Nuts, man! You got the dog pounds on there. You got SWV. You got uh, Albie Shores on that joint. You got um, Aaron Halls on that joint. I mean, it's just a dope soundtrack, yeah. man. I mean, yeah. Talk I, I did a little research uh, before we did our list. You know, after we did our list, I didn't want our list to be influenced by anybody else. And this was up there when I, in, on multiple lists about the top soundtracks of all time in hip hop films. Yeah. Above the Rim generally comes between it's in the top 10 for sure, but mm. it's usually in the top five. I mean, it's a yeah. very, very solid. And I think because it's on the strength of Pac, because Pac has got and then regulators. You know what I'm saying? It's got, you know, right. it's, it's a dope soundtrack, man. It's, it's, a, soundtrack. it's a great soundtrack. Um, The only one that I would put above, above the Rim is our next one. Mm. We're talking about, if we're talking about Death Row, produce mm-hmm. soundtracks now you threw me for a loop because i wasn't even thinking about this one when you put it on the list why do you have this one on the list as a as a one above above the rim ladies and gentlemen if you don't know which one we're talking about we're talking about murder was the case I think, yeah. murder was the case and you ask me why i'll tell you why natural born killers Mm. What would you do? Murder was the case. Dollars and cents. Mm. Sam Sneed, I think you better recognize. Mm. <laughs> what? <laughs> like, what are we talking about? <laughs> I mean. Murder was the case. That That might be Next to New Jersey Drive, Murder Was the Case might be my favorite soundtrack. Man, that might be my, that might be my favorite soundtrack. You know what? I, I, and I hate to, I don't even remember, man. I was too young. I don't remember the film, though. Do you remember the film? No, <laughs> I never saw the film. <laughs> no, nah, I, was, I was too young to see the film. But um, also, because I, I like, because there's two versions of the song Murder Was the Case. And me, I prefer the movie version that was the the version that was uh, used in the music video as opposed to the version that's on uh, Doggy Style. What I was prefer- the difference? I, I think the difference was, uh, wasn't the uh, the original one? Because I think the one on the on the album was like, murder, murder was the case. But the other one was like, mm. it, it was more dark. The other one in the movie was darker, right? And the music yeah. video. Yeah, the beat the beat was different. Um, like tweet, like the um, the bass for one, like the bass line was more pronounced in the in the radio. I'm gonna just call it the radio MTV version. The like it's just, it was just more like like you said, like menacing. The the beat was just different, but um, the the radio MTV version it was just more. They made it more of a production that in a good way that I like. And I, you know, it's sort of like the difference between it's kind of like the difference between um Method Man's um You're All I Need, the album version versus the radio version. Um, you know, you can argue, you know, the album version is honest, obviously more gritty. The radio version is is, you know, was done by Puff and you know, you you got well. Puff did a remix. It's like two remixes, but it's sort of the same argument. Um, but for me, for my for my musical taste, um, I prefer the the radio version more. Um, but both versions are just hard as shit, man. Like it's just the hard and and the thing about Death Row Death Row Records in general is that they had Dre on the boards. And so sonically, like 
it just sounds different from everything else. Like, like there's no albums that's better mixed than Chronic, Doggy Style, you know, Murder Was the Case. Like, they just sound ridiculous. Like, you can play them on anything and them shits hit, man. Like, it, it's it's nuts. And so, for me, I just, you know, they they just, they hit different. Those those Death Row records hit different, man. They do. They, do. they had a different sound. It just sounded, uh, whether it was the engineer or whether it was the Dr. Dre's production, uh, what he arranged his his drums and his samples. It was just, it was a different level. Um, you yeah. can tell the quality of those records. And then he had, you know, he had people around him that helped with the sound, like Daz and, mm-hmm. you know, Metal Man and, and, uh, and others and uh, Chris the Glove, you know what I'm saying? So he had a lot right. of people around that kind of contribute to the sound, man. I will share that with the team tonight, Vey. Your thoughts on the matter. And uh, this is a dope show. I'm going to recap real quick, man. Uh, our first annual hip-hop movie overview slash award show. Categories we did, non-hip-hop movies that inspired the genre. We said Scarface, The Godfather, Bronx Tale, Shaolin Wu-Tang, Goodfellas, Kings of New- King of New York, Casino, and Dolomite. Man, I wish I had a part two. Which could, what could have been a sequel? Brown Sugar, The Last Dragon, I'm about it. New Jack City, New York Undercover. The Hood Classics, Baller Blocking, Don't Be a Menace in South Central While Drinking Your Juice in the Hood. I'm about it again. Shot us, New Jersey Drive. The Underrated Films, South Central, Belly, The Last Dragon, Fresh, Higher Learning, CB4. State Property 2, The Scene Stealer Award, Robin Harris House Party, Bernie Mac, Players Club, Big Boy, ATL, Snoop Dogg, Baby Boy, Chris Rock, New Jack City, and Shabadoo and Boogaloo Shrimp and Breaking. The Best Rapper Actor, Will Smith, LL Cool J, Most Deaf, Ice Cube, Queen Latifah, and Honorable Mentions, Common in Ice T. The best supporting role in a hip hop film Chris Tucker in Friday, John Witherspoon in Friday, Most Deaf and Brown Sugar, Juan Carlo Esposito, Do the Right Thing, and Lorenz Tate, Menace to Society. The best actress performance in a hip hop film Sanai Lathan Brown Sugar, Queen Latifah and Set It Off, Radon Chong in Beat Street, Lisa Ray, The Players Club, and Nia Long, Friday. The best actor performance in a hip hop film: Tupac Shakur and Juice, Ice Cube and Friday, Terrence Howard and Hustle and Flow, Cameron Payne and Full, LL Cool J, In Too Deep. The biggest villain in a hip hop film: Cameron Rico, Payne and Full, Wesley Snipes, Nino Brown, New Jack City, LL Cool J, Dwayne Keith, God Gittins, In Too Deep, Tiny Lester Debo, Friday. Julius Carey showing up the last dragon, Tupac Shakur, Bishop and Juice. And then our favorite film of all time was Juice, Friday, Menace, uh, no, not Menace Society, Boys in the Hood, Crush Groove, House Party, Paid in Full with Honorable Mentions, New Jack City, Dead Presidents, Above the Rim, and Baby Boy. And let's go to the movie poster. Best movie posters, Belly. Do the Right Thing, Juice, Crush Groove, Friday, Brown Sugar. Honorable mention, Boys in the Hood, Don't Be a Menace in South Central while drinking your juice in the hood. Bullworth, CB4, Get Rich or Die Trying. Uh, I, well, I think that was it. I think our no, soundtrack, let's end it with soundtrack. The best hip-hop soundtrack to a film of all time. New Jersey Drive, Get Rich or Die Trying. I'm about it. Juice, Above the Rim, Murder Was the Case. Honorable mention, Who's the Man? High School High, Eight Miles, Streets is Watching, Great White Hope, Don't Be a Menace, and Sunset Park. And there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. That's our list of the best hip-hop films, posters, actors, actresses, soundtracks, villains, everything, man. We're going to have a real award show one day and uh, 
have a stage in LA and New York would do it big or even in Atlanta, man. Well, this is a fun show, babe. Yeah, yeah, hell yeah. It's a long ass show. This might long be a long ass show. It's a long show, man. Hell. But the, but the bright new, the best news we have a name, man. This is around the culture, and we really talked about the cinematic elements around the culture, man. So this is dope. Around the culture. Around the culture, man. Check us out next week. As always, I'm Ron. That's Vay. Peace.